Hey, good morning, good morning, friends and neighbors. What do you say? It is Tuesday morning, February 11. Great to see you today. This is the Bill Press Show. We're coming to you live from our nation's capital on Free Speech TV, of course, and Direct TV Network, and on our video stream, uh, youtube.com slash Bill Press. I'm sorry, it's youtube.com slash Talker TV. T-A-W-K-R-T-V. That, of course, you can get anywhere on the planet. And this morning I say a big bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Oui, aujourd'hui c'est l'invasion des Français. The President of France, François Hollande, arrives today for his official state visit. He did a little sneak preview yesterday, touring Monticello with President Obama. But this morning, it is the official royal reception, well, not royal, state reception, I guess, on the South Lawn, followed by a a morning uh, full of meetings between the two presidents and their top aides. Then uh, the two presidents have a news conference for all of us in the East Room of the White House at noon, followed by the big state dinner and reception tonight. Tents are set up on the South Lawn. It's going to be a very festive day. In other news... Republicans must have already decided that Hillary Clinton's going to be the Democratic nominee in 2016 because Rand Paul and other Republicans are out there attacking her and her husband Bill every day. Don't you think maybe they should wait to find out for sure that she's running? And maybe, don't you think, they might want to wait until 2016 when people are really thinking about the presidential campaign? Uh, And do people really care what Bill Clinton did with Monica Lewinsky almost 20 years ago now? Mm, I don't think so. And another huge winter storm headed for the south and the northeast, while the Midwest remains buried in snow and suffering sub-zero temperatures. All of that coming up right here on The Bill Press Show. This is The Bill Press Show. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. 
Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? headed to Alabama what's going on global warming is crazy man good morning good morning good morning everybody great to see you this morning and welcome welcome to the program it's called the Bill Press show because that's my name Bill Press by the way it's really my name everybody wants to say well what was your name before you changed it to press no, no it was it is wait that's your press. real name that's my real you name work in the media and your real name is actually press that's my real name damn it <laughs> 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 hey great to see you this morning <laughs> wherever you happen to be welcome uh, welcome to the show we're coming to you live from Washington DC our nation's capital reaching out to you on your local progressive talk radio station so good to be your morning show on the radio, wherever you happen to be, starting the day uh, from the right side, meaning the left side. Uh, we're here with you also on Free Speech TV, looking good on the satellite, looking good on Direct TV and the Dish Network, and looking good around the world on our video stream at youtube.com slash talker TV. Uh, hello, where you ever, where you, wherever you happen to be on this planet, and uh, we welcome you to the international talk show of the morning. <laughs> well, lots going on this morning. Um, we have just uh, learned some news we'll tell you about. We have the president of France is here. They had a little sneak preview yesterday, a visit down to Monticello with uh, the President Hollande and President Obama, and today it's all the official ceremonies at the White House. 
I'll be there a little later this morning when the two presidents meet reporters from both the United States and France. We've got the team here in place this morning, Peter Ogburn and uh, Lisa Murphy. Good morning, good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. With uh, Alicia Cruz there, uh, taking your calls at 866-55-PRESS. That's one way to get through. It'll give us your comments, 866 55 or you can send us your comments on Twitter. Love to hear from you on Twitter, at BP Show. Real easy, at BP Show. And on Facebook, come on, friends, wake up. Give us a, give us a call. Give us your comments at uh, Facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Yes, this uh, latest storm headed our way. Uh, by the way, you know, I, somebody from California the other day was saying, will you people on the East Coast stop whining about the weather? Okay. We're not whining about the weather. It's just unusual yeah. for snow to be hitting Atlanta yes. and Birmingham and others. And I do want to say hats off to or big hug to all of our friends out in Chicago especially and Minneapolis. And the, the, they have been buried, buried. <sighs> and while we go in and out of storms, right. they just have this <clears throat> yeah. steady diet. It's been a bad winter Chicago, for Chicago. yesterday, they, uh, I saw Dean Reynolds last night on CBS 20 days so far, sub-zero in Chicago. Wow, 20, 20 days. days. Oh. The world's record is, uh, t- uh, since they've been keeping track, uh, 25 days, and they'll probably exceed that this year. So Oof. far in Chicago, they've had five feet of snow. Holy cow. In the city, five feet of snow, right? Okay, so <laughs> we recognize... The people who are really being hard hit, all of our good friends out of WCPT in Chicago and other places around. That's right? a tough winter. Yeah, yeah. And it's been Jeez. the same in Minneapolis, I say, and, and uh, so, um, not to mention Fargo. I mean, oh, yeah. In yeah. fact, nobody's heard from anybody in Fargo. That's right. They, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> <go> dormant. <laughs> just under this great big. All communications ceased during the winter <laughs> in Fargo. Just, yeah. This big bank. And, um, so here, another storm expected uh, tomorrow morning, I guess, to hit uh, the Atlanta, or t- even tonight, the Atlanta and Birmingham. And both both cities have been very, very hard hit. But the governor of Georgia, they can't <laughs> afford. <laughs> no. Uh, the mayor of Atlanta, Kasim Reed, and the governor of Georgia, Nathan Deal, they can't afford another screw-up. So the governor <laughs> yesterday said they have already, last night, they were closing highways and telling people to get off the roads. We're not looking back, we're looking forward. The next three days are going to be challenging days for the state and for local government and for private entities. Yep, they were out there salting. They're not joking around. No, they were salting the roads last night. And they said, 5 o'clock, by 5 o'clock you can get home and then get off the road and just stay off the road. They can't have that happen again. (laughs) They cannot have what happened. You know what they're going to do? They're going to go to the other extreme now. Yes, exactly. (laughs) You know they will. Nobody leave your house. (laughs) (laughs) Down in Alabama, they they handed out uh, uh, chains on the the fire trucks. Here's from Fultondale, Alabama. It makes a huge difference when you have no traction. Especially here in Fultondale with us having so many hills, we need the traction to be able to get up and down the hills without wrecking our engine. So they got the f- uh, chains on the, on, the, on the fire trucks. And by the way, in Northern California, they are, uh, they are happy as clams out there. Big, big smiles on Mount Tamalpais, right where near I live in Marin County, right north of San Francisco. 20 inches of rain over the weekend. No kidding. 20 inches of rain. That's great. Yeah. And um, they said that one reservoir there, Kent Lake, uh, they got 25% more water. I mean, it, it wow. went up 25%, 25% over a two-day period. Wow. Wow. So anyhow, there is some good news on the West Coast as well. we got lots to talk about today and lots of good people to help us do it. Of course, it's Tuesday. Arthur Delaney will be here from Huffington Post. Igor Volsky here from uh, Think Progress. And then we'll be talking to Mary Beth Cahill from the United Auto Workers Union and some other guests coming up later. But first, this is the Full Court Press. A couple of other news uh, items out there. Sad news to report this morning. Breaking news. Uh, Child star Shirley Temple died overnight. Her agent confirmed she has passed away at her home in California. She was 85 years old. Best known as starting her career as a three-year-old child actress, which is kind of stunning if you think about it. Here's one stat that I, that blew my mind. When she was seven years old, which was in 1936, 
She was earning fifty thousand dollars per year. When you adjust that, adjust that to inflation, that's eight hundred thousand dollars in today's money. So she was seven years old, pulling down eight hundred grand back in the day. Uh, she became our ambassador to uh, Ghana and to mm-hmm. Czechoslovakia. Later, she was our um, uh, sort of what do they call it, diplomatic um, uh, chief of protocol of okay. the United States uh, for a while. Uh, and she also ran for Congress. Mm. She ran uh, against. Pete McCloskey, who was a Republican member of Congress, a fairly right? liberal um, member of Congress from San Mateo County. Uh, do you remember uh, why? what her famous thing, as a child actress, what her uh, what she was famous for? You're going to have to tell me now. Singing uh-huh. The Good Ship Lollipop. Okay. Yes. All right. Singing this little song, The Good Ship Lollipop. Okay. I'm familiar So with she that. ran for Congress. She lost. Uh, and a friend of mine wrote a book, ran, ran Pete McCloskey's campaign against her. And wrote a book about it called The Sinking of the Good Ship Lollipop. Oh, 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 oh wow. It's one of my favorite political books. <laughs> uh, just the title, The Sinking of yeah. the Good Ship Lollipop. Yeah, that's harsh. <laughs> that's harsh. What are some of the weird things that people steal from the store? Wall Street 24-7 put out a list. Condoms. And number one? <laughs> Cigarettes. Laundry detergent. No. People go to the store and steal laundry detergent all the time. Also, allergy medicine, pregnancy test, uh, Nutella. People are always stealing Nutella. See. Nutella, really? Yeah, Nutella. Oh, wow. I can understand that. Yeah. Man. And number 10 I on the list. I stole a few bottles of that myself. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> Yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Number 10 on the list is steak. They go to the store, they just no. steal some steak. What it's unbelievable. Where do you put it? Well, I mean, wherever you can, I guess. Is <laughs> it? <laughs> There's a story I had done so long about a guy. You got a steak in your pants? You just have it to That's right. He stuffed all this. You got a tenderloin in your pocket? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And and, uh, we'll go to the Olympics in Sochi where a wardrobe malfunction almost happened to Russian speed skater Olga Graf. She won a bronze medal in the 3,000 meter speed skating over the uh, weekend. She started to unzip her racing suit. And then she realized oh. Oh. she had nothing on underneath it. <laughs> she got all the way down to her belly button before she looked down and realized that there was nothing underneath her suit. And she sort of jumped to and then zipped it back up and had a sheepish smile on her face as she completed her lap. Nothing came out. Nothing was seen. Everything was covered up. Just a little strip of skin where the zipper was. But uh, we almost had an international incident. You know, I know some people do anything to get their scores up. But, yeah. you know, <laughs> <laughs> she just happened to do it right in front of the judge's yeah. stand. Oh, whoops. <laughs> yeah, right. Oops. <laughs> I forgot. There you go. <coughs> All right, Peter, thank you. Yeah, I got to tell you, where I want to start this morning, this this just baffles me. Okay. Well, first of all, we know, right, there's there's no doubt about it. What, what baffles me, just to give the, <laughs> the subject here, is this sudden Republican morbid fascination with Bill and Hillary Clinton. This obsession with wanting to talk about Bill and Monica Lewinsky again. And Rand Paul is the one who is sort of leading the charge. But but here's the context. The context is that we know the Republicans are very defensive over the fact that uh, everybody talks about the war on women and the Republican war on women. Uh, And so Rand Paul has come up with this this idea saying, okay, this isn't fair. How can they talk about the Republican war on women? How can Democrats talk about that when Bill Clinton cheated on his wife and had this affair, although consensual affair, he doesn't admit that, with his intern in the White House who was just in her 20s? As long as Bill Clinton did that, Democrats can't talk about the war on women. This is such a disconnect. But you know what? He keeps saying it day in and day out every day. He was on uh, just a couple of days ago on this. This is on um, uh, Andrew. No, no. no, On C-SPAN. Right. And he had said it before on Meet the Press. He's asked again about it on C-SPAN. 
Well, Senator McCaskill needs to remember what she had to say about Bill Clinton, that she wouldn't want her daughter in the same room with him. So they can't have it both ways. The Democrats can say, oh, we're the great defenders of women's rights in the workplace, and we will defend you against uh, some kind of abusive boss that uses their position of authority to take advantage of a young woman when the leader of their party, the, leader, the leading fundraiser in the country, is Bill Clinton, who was a perpetrator of that kind of sexual harassment uh, you know so they can't have it both ways well they can't have it both ways wait whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, first of all before we get to respond to that so then uh, here's the leader of the republican party today reince Priebus. now he's on with andrea mitchell the other day and he's asked i mean she's asked the the, the right question really you just want to dredge all this stuff again this is smart is that a legitimate issue rehashing the well, 90s if Hillary Clinton becomes uh, a candidate for president? I think everything's on the table. I mean, I, I don't see how someone just gets a pass on, on, uh, on anything. I mean, especially in today's politics. So, I mean, I think we're gonna have a truckload of opposition research on Hillary Clinton, and some things may be old, and oh. some things might be new. But I think everything is at stake when you're talking about the leader of the free world and who are gonna give the keys to uh, run uh, the United States of America. Now, I mean, come on, you tell me if this makes any sense. 866-55-PRESS. I mean, just a couple of points, right, quickly, okay? This happened like 20 years ago. Do you think anybody gives a rat's ass? I mean, it wasn't right what Bill Clinton did. I'm not defending it. But, you know, over half of voters today, I would guess without doing the instant research on it, weren't even alive then. Or they certainly weren't of voting age. They were in diapers, they're not going to care about this as an issue, number one. Number two, there's a total disconnect between the war on women. There is a Republican war on women. They are the anti-choice party. They're still passing strict anti-abortion uh, uh, re resolutions at the state level and, uh, and legislation here in, in, in the Congress. They oppose including contraception as part of health care. They oppose Obamacare, which helps women the most. They oppose raising the minimum wage, which helps women the most. You, women the most. You can go on and on and on. CNN just did a poll. Get this. 59% of women, Republicans and Democrats, say the Republicans don't care about women. 64% of women, Republican and Democrat, over 50, say Republicans don't care about women. They got a problem. And talking about Bill Clinton is not going to wish that problem away. There's a total disconnect. It's like we're, we're, I, I, might, I would say, oh, Republicans, clearly, how can they say they care about women when Newt Gingrich was cheating on his wife when he was speaker, right? Or how can they say they care about women when Mike Huckabee says – and by the way, that wasn't 20 years ago, <laughs> says that all women are wild, out of control, who can't control their sexual libido, and they depend on Uncle Sugar. You know? I mean, so here's what I don't get is, what does Rand Paul think this is doing for the Republican Party? And then the chairman of the Republican Party says, this is fair game, baby. Oh, yeah, we're going to go after Hillary and Bill, and you bet that's what we're going to. I mean, there's, today, 866-55-PRESS. I don't get it. Yeah, I'm not defending Bill Clinton. I'm just questioning the wisdom of this as a political strategy. And by the way, Hillary should not be held responsible for Bill's peccadilloes. Don't you agree? 866-55-PRESS. <laughs> this is The Bill Press Show. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Columbine. Virginia Tech. Tucson. Aurora. Fort Hood. Oak Creek. Newtown. 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 How many more? How many more? How many more colleges? How many more classrooms? How many more movie theaters? How many more houses of faith? How many more shopping malls? How many more street corners? 
How many more? How many more? Enough. 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 Demand a plan. Right now. As a mom. As a dad. As a friend. As a husband. As a wife. As an American. As an American. As an American. As a human being. For the children of Sandy Hook. Demand a plan. No more lists of names. It's not too soon. It's too late. Now is the time. Before we all know someone who loved someone on that list. No more lists. No more who they might have been. No more if we had just done something yesterday. It's time. We can do better than this. We can do better than this. It's time. It's time. It's time for our leaders to act. Demand a plan. Right now. Right now. You! Demand it! Enough. 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 None of us would want to be told we can't marry the person we love. As Americans, we believe in freedom. That's what I fought for as a Marine, and that's what we believe in as Republicans. Freedom means freedom for everyone. I didn't used to understand the importance of same-sex marriage, but after learning my brother was gay, I wanted the same rights for him. He was the best man at my wedding, and I want to be the best man at his. It's only fair that Calvin should have the freedom to marry the person he loves, too. It's time for marriage. At Earth Justice, we defend the environment in the courtroom. Join our fight. When you take a seat, you take a stand. Earth Justice, because the Earth needs a good lawyer. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide and go seek. How you can help. is the Bill Press Show. All right, here we go at 26 minutes after the hour. On the Bill Press Show, Arthur Delaney from Huffington Post joins us in the next half hour. We're trying to figure out what Rand Paul is up to, dredging up Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky and thinking this is going to be the winning issue in 2016. Helen's up in Ithaca, New York. Hey, Helen, good morning. Hi, Bill. I met you when you were up here. Oh, great! I'll be back up again this spring. I'm, I haven't oh. even announced. I haven't even called the station yet to tell them I'm coming. Well, but I I'll spin, put it on my. I'll put it on my calendar. It's been too um, long. What's going on? All right. What you know? I am so disgusted with this resurrecting this Monica Lewinsky stuff. Yeah. I don't, I don't follow this scandal sheet nonsense. But I don't even know what Monica Lewinsky is doing now. But if the Republicans are resurrecting it, I think that the Clintons. Their response is kind of idiotic. They should just ignore it because what they've done is uh, a former friend who recently passed away, a friend of Hillary Clinton, who is a professor of something, I can't remember what. Yeah, Diane Blair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at right. the University of uh, Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah. 
um, that, that she had these notes and she's saying that uh, Hillary said that Monica Lewinsky is this narcissist. Looney Bill Tune. Clinton was trying to keep her under control or something. You don't keep someone under control by having an affair with them. I mean, I don't, I don't understand this logic. Uh, Do you? Uh, no. Also, again, also, these are notes that a friend of Hillary's made about some private conversations she had with Hillary, and um, I don't understand why that. Um, Helen, you're still there. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not yeah. a defense. Okay. It's Stupid. Yeah, no, it is indeed. Listen, Helen, I got to tell you, uh, you're so good to call, and this is Valentine's Day coming up on Friday, so I want to send you a, something very, very special. Hold on, Helen, so we get your information. I'll send you a $50 gift certificate for Pro Flowers. And for all the rest of you, if you haven't done anything about Valentine's, don't forget Pro Flowers. You can't do better than that. Fantastic flowers. Call 1 800 P R O Flowers if you type in my name, Press. You get a very, very special deal, and those flowers are guaranteed to be delivered on Valentine's Day. And a 50 buck certificate out to you, this Helen, from is Ithaca. The Bill Press Show. This is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Flick it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. Nice and dark. She's gonna love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. 
Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I've I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Big, big fan. Yeah, thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm going to have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. On your radio, on TV, and online, this is The Bill Press Show. Hey, what do you say? 33 minutes after the hour now. Here we go. It is The Bill Press Show on a Tuesday morning, February 11, uh, and brought to you today by Ulico Incorporated. The good men and women of Ulico proudly serving the union workplace for more than 85 years, and now under President Ed Smith, providing specialty insurance, risk solutions, investment products and services, and a lot more for our good union members. Find out more about their good work at their website, ulico, U-L-L-I-C-O dot com. Hey, it's Tuesday morning, and look who the cat dragged in, Arthur Delaney. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, he, he's the champion of the middle class at uh, Huffington Post, and we're glad to have him here every Tuesday morning. On the, there you go. Arthur, nice to see you. Good Everything to be good? here. You ready for the uh, next big snowstorm of the winter? I've got severely chapped lips, and I had been putting lip balm on it. That stuff doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, it, no. Sometimes it, it makes it, it worse. It has made it yeah, worse. Yeah, it definitely right. made it worse. Yeah, hold on one sec. One sec. Just one sec. <laughs> <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, Jesus. Uh, Bill's Do you have chapstick? No, oh, here it is. Here it is. All right. No, I don't want this stuff, man. No, That's the stuff I have in my office. No, this, it does this not is not work. This stuff is different. Blistex does it's work. not different. Blistex. I'm telling you, this is a ticket. All right. Take, All right, I'll, I'll think take of, it I'll from think a California of... skier. Oh, oh, right. oh, I had that. <laughs> Let's take it. I keep it in my, uh, in my briefcase anyway. I have All to right. try that. I haven't been using that. Really? It no. hasn't been working. No, it's good stuff. All right. Good to see you, Arthur. <laughs> Thanks for derailing us here. All right. We have been talking about a very important topic, so just sit still there for a minute All because right. I want to. some other people want to weigh in on the fact that what I find... Um, it, incredible and unbelievable and politically stupid is that suddenly Rand Paul, with the support of Reince Priebus, the chair of the Republican National Committee, is trying to make Bill Clinton the big issue of the day today, saying, how can Democrats accuse women, uh, de- how can Democrats accuse Republicans of having a war on women when Bill Clinton had an affair with Monica Lewinsky 20 years ago? Hello, what's the connection there? Is there really one? Melvin's out in South Bend, Indiana. What do you say, Melvin? I say good morning, and team, let me make it perfectly clear. The war on women continues this Friday as we bombard them with flowers, chocolate, and diamonds. (laughs) 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 And then as we continue on in this war, we look at Rand Paul and bring up his college days at Baylor, a Uh Christian University, mm-hmm. where he's accused of smoking weed, bowing down to Aqua Buddha, Aqua Buddha. and forcing a lady to yes. be kidnapped on her own. Yeah. Of course, he would say that, mm. but nobody's asking him about that. So oh. continue this war on women this yeah. Friday, men. All right. Thank you, Melvin. Always good to hear from you. Yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> hey, Rand Paul, how about that little college caper there? Mm-hmm. Aqua Buddha. Aqua Buddha. Forgot about Aqua Buddha. I don't forget Aqua Buddha. <laughs> and Diana from Loudon, Tennessee. Hi, Diana. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. We we all know that Rand Paul's um, last original thought was the first time he was hungry. So <laughs> obviously he has to reach back um, into history and plagiarize some more. <laughs> That's Go so Hillary. fair. <laughs> Go Hillary. I'd never heard that phrase before. First original thought. Diana, hold on there just a minute. Peter wants yeah, to say yeah, something. Yeah, hold on, Dana. We have a gift card to either Pro Flowers or Sherry's Berries. Oh. You get to pick. Uh, we're going to put you on hold there. You got their, You got her on hold. And uh, we will, we'll we'll give you 50 bucks to either Pro Flowers or Sherry's Berries. You can either go to proflowers.com or berries.com to redeem that. So thanks so much for calling in. 
All right. And yes, and happy Valentine's Day. Happy Diana. Valentine's Day. And Arthur, happy Valentine's to you. How are you doing? All right. So uh, you and I, t- last week you were in, we talked about the farm bill. There's some good stuff in the farm bill. Doesn't cut food stamps as much as we feared it might. Right. right. Okay. Uh, and um, the president has had a – this is a, a bipartisan bill. They finally got it through. It took him two years. They got it through. And he wanted to celebrate. Him, and so he went out to uh, University of Michigan, Lansing, Michigan, to sign it. And they invited, I don't know, a dozen Republicans or so to come along on Air Force One. Yeah. With some of the Democrats who were involved in the bill that they had worked on on the bill. And not one Republican accepted. It was not a Democrat bill. No. A uh, thoroughly bipartisan effort. And one of the chief architects, Frank Lucas, Republican of Oklahoma, chair of the House Agriculture Committee, I am surprised to hear that he he was not there. No. That, that, is, uh, that is incredible. He's been working on this for years. Uh, and you could see his exasperation at many times. At with his Republicans. Fel- at his fellow Republicans. Yeah, yeah. he, he is know. a sort of uh, a moderate, uh, affable, centrist-type guy. So the fact that Republicans would not go to this, at least some of them, is quite surprising. I think they're, you know, they really do, they're into this mindset that if they are seen in the same city with Barack Obama, you know, or seen <laughs> certainly in the same room with Barack Obama, that they could never get reelected. I read a story by David Rogers, Politico's, one of their senior reporters who's covered ag policy for many years. And uh, the way he put it was that uh, perhaps Stabenow's office hadn't checked with some of these people before they made plans to have the signing ceremony in Michigan. Uh, and, and, you know, that was the reason that they, they felt uh, snubbed I, I, by that. My understanding is that David Rogers is wrong. I mean, <laughs> the, well, seriously, the White House did the invitations. Uh, Carney talked about this. The White House did the invitations. The White House was in touch with these offices, and they just simply said no. Just like, you know, the president had a screening of Lincoln at the White House. Lincoln, the movie Lincoln at the White House. He invited John Boehner and all these Republicans come down. He's the leader of the Republican Party, they say. Yeah. Right? I remember and at wait, one time. Wait, <laughs> my, my point is okay. not one of them accepted Lincoln. Now, to, to go see Lincoln, for God's sakes. Thad Cochran, senator from Mississippi, uh, was invited out to this signing ceremony because he was one of the Senate co authors of the bill, right? And he, he said, no, he, he just, the reason he didn't go is because it's, it's too far out there and back. But how would you get there? Yeah, on Air Force One, right? <laughs> Hello. We have really real hardship to fly on Air Force One. I remember the, dur- during one of those uh, uh, budget crisis episodes, the White House was putting up with a lot of questions. You know, why doesn't Obama have better relationships? Smooth. Why does, yeah. And <laughs> the White House released what was actually a pretty embarrassing list of all the times they'd asked Republicans out on a date or to a movie. <laughs> And they said, they said no. And <laughs> so, Obama was like, you know, I'm a I'm a uh, likable guy. Yeah. No, I do think he should. Sh- I think he should schmooze more. But I think this latest uh, incident with the signings shows that schmoozing alone doesn't work. Well, a little a little policy maybe. A, I I don't think Republicans they made the biggest stink over getting all these changes to food stamps. Yeah. And they and got they, them. They, they, well, no, they oh, no, didn't I mean, get them. In the Senate, they still cut them. Yeah. Well, they cut them a little bit, but there's yeah. all this stuff, drug testing. Didn't get, uh, didn't get, yeah. Stricter means testing. Yeah. Work requirements. That stuff was, uh, they, you know, Democrats blasted it with a shrink ray, and they got, like, permission for states to run pilot programs. One of the other things we've talked about, uh, minimum wage. Um, it, uh, Mayor de Blasio gave his state of the city address yesterday uh, in New York and said, I'm not going to wait for Washington anymore. We're going to raise the minimum wage in New York. Um, do you see this happening more and more around the country? Well, a lot of municipalities, states and cities, have got higher minimum wages than mm-hmm. the federal minimum. And there is a lot of movement right now for states and cities to, to get them even higher. To get them toward a living wage, you know, above ten dollars an hour, in some cases as high as uh, fifteen dollars an hour. It's sort of surprising that this hasn't already happened in New York, just because that city is so ridiculously yeah. expensive. Right. And just think, how are you making a living if you're working at uh, one of these 
McDonald's is in Times Square. Uh, it's not possible. Right. So so it's, it's so they have the federal minimum wage there, which is seven dollars twenty five cents an hour. If you've got a family and that's your that's what you make all year, that's below poverty. And there's nothing stopping a city or a state from saying, yeah, we know seven twenty five is not enough for our people. We want it to be twelve or fifteen, right? I that mean, is why, in his State of the Union, the president was like, "Listen." States, cities, don't wait for Congress because they're not going to do this. Go ahead and you do it, and you have the support of the public. That's according to polls. The polls show even Republicans are fine with a higher minimum wage, notwithstanding the economic debate over whether it truly helps workers or not, which I think is not a debate that is favorable to opponents of raising the minimum wage. Uh, Just go ahead and do it. It's popular. Right. I haven't even heard anybody say, we'll do it as long as we pay for it, right? I mean, I think people, peop, I'm not talking about Congress now. American people just say, 725 is not enough to live on. These big companies uh, like Walmart and McDonald's c- can afford to pay their workers a little better when you've got record profitability. The question know. is, can they afford to provide health insurance when you have... A distressed baby, maybe. <laughs> well, this is a touchy subject for me. <laughs> but oh, we it is? This is AOL is the company oh, of the... Oh, uh, dist- sorry. Ooh. <laughs> Are there? That's right. <laughs> they own the Huffington Post. This yes. policy was reversed. Yes, it was. And the distressed baby comment was, I must say, gracefully apologized for, though, as you can see from the headlines on today's paper, the, the fallout continues. Uh, <laughs> Well, I was going to say one more thing about New York. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> before you, before you uh, lose your job, you mean? Here, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> another thing that President Obama and other Democrats have uh, been making noise for at the national level is discrimination against the unemployed and uh, fighting back against job ads that say unemployed need not apply, oh, right, essentially. Right. Uh, well, the, they'll they'll actually the, say... He had the CEOs in the White House to talk about <laughs> That's right. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he had previously proposed legislation that would mm-hmm. do this, that would say, you can't require, you can't stipulate that must be currently employed in a job ad. And you and if you do, we do catch you, you know, we're, he wanted to give unemployed people a legal way of uh, uh, fighting back against that. Anyway, New York City has already done this. The city council passed a ban on those kinds of job ads. Hmm. Uh, Mike Bloomberg hmm. vetoed it, and they overrode his veto. So this is one respect in which New York has you know, already got ahead of uh, Barack Obama on helping the unemployed. I don't know that that has actually helped anybody, but it's a, a meaningful, symbolic gesture. Uh, and it's reported this morning that the city council is, all, is, is about to uh, ac- adopt legislation which would require all New York City employers to provide time off to their employees to care for themselves or their family members. Sort of paid sick leave. Sort of, yeah, an extended. We're paid like the sick only leave. country in the world where you don't have this. Right. So, uh, I don't. Uh, that, you know what else? Uh, p- paid maternity leave. We're the only country in the world where that essentially doesn't exist. So which the is message. Shocking. The message here is: uh, if if Washington's not going to deliver, then you know, cities and states have to step up to the plate, and they are. Arthur, L- Arthur Delaney is here to tell us all about it from Huffington Post. 866-55-PRESS is the toll-free number. Give us a call. We'll be right back. This is the Bill Press Show. For more than 18 months, the members of AFSCME 3299 have been working to secure a new contract with the University of California. With workplace injuries at UC skyrocketing and government fines related to safety deficiencies at UC hospitals skyrocketing, Local 3299's top priority has been safe staffing at the workplace. We've been short of people like for the last five years. They're stretching us thin, which the students are suffering, the faculty suffering, 
and the patients are suffering. While UC administrators have granted these standards to other UC workers, they have refused to make similar accommodations for AFSCME represented workers who perform the most physically demanding labor at UC. It takes a whole team to take care of the patient. It's not just the RN and it's not just the doctor. The nurses were able to win a great contract and AFSCME workers, the patient care workers and service workers, they're part of the team and they deserve that same fair contract too. We take pride into to working for the university and we feel like the university doesn't, doesn't value the work that we do. But the second class treatment of AFSCME workers doesn't end at safety and staffing. On wages, benefits, and other issues, UC refuses to offer AFSCME 3299 members the same respect they afford their other workers. I have three jobs because what the university pays me is just not enough to, uh, to, to make a living for my family and myself. 99% of service workers in the UC system make so little money that they're eligible for at least some form of public assistance. At the same time, the number of executives in the UC system that have crossed over into making at least a quarter of a million dollars a year has more than doubled since 2008. The University of California has long been a beacon of hope and progress for those struggling for dignity and fairness. With such a proud history, it is disturbing to see the leadership of the university treat its lowest paid workers like second class citizens. All workers at the university deserve equal treatment. This is the Bill Press Show. Straight from uh, Sochi, Igor Volsky joins us in the uh, next half hour <laughs> of the show here. Uh, he just flew in this morning from the motherland. <laughs> Arthur Delaney is here right now from Huffington Post. Arthur, um, always good to have you with us. Thank you for coming in. It's HuffingtonPost.com. Last Thursday, uh, Harry Reid tried again, had another vote uh, to extend the unemployment insurance. Still hard to believe that they left town in, over the hot Christmas holidays and let it expire, but they did, and they haven't done anything about it since. How close did they come? They needed five Republicans, and they got four. So they were one vote short. Could not get one more vote. No, it was not one more Republican who would make it happen. It was Rob- This was just a procedural vote, too, right? Yeah, this, is, this yeah. wasn't a vote that would right. have brought your benefits back. Even if they did something, the House isn't going to do anything, it seems to me. Uh, but Rob Portman, who had previously supported this, was the swing vote. And I talked to him beforehand. Before the vote, he said, I haven't made up my mind. But his problem with it was he didn't like the pay for the uh, provision that they used to okay. offset the deficit impact. That's a lame excuse. So uh, are people, is this really hurting people? You've been reporting on this. So we've been writing about unemployed people this whole time. Uh, and today, Sam Stein and I are writing a story for HuffingtonPost.com mm-hmm. in which we're just catching up with some people. I brought some uh, uh, some of my interview notes in here. I can, oh, I can read, let the, you know you mean what this, some of these people the, are saying. We're hearing them here before they appear on Huffington Post? That's right. It's a Bill Press exclusive. Bill Press exclusive. <laughs> we need some music. We need a music bed. Okay. <laughs> so Mary Lowe of Ironton, Ohio, uh, Rob Portman's yes. uh, home state. She had previously been on a call with Democrats talking about how this was messing up her life. Uh, And she said, it's not like I'm holding out for that $15 per hour job. I've applied for everything from restaurants to call centers to secretary positions. 
It's frustrating watching th- watching this. And then they go home. Really? They had some kind of retreat or, or confession. It's just like, really? <laughs> and yeah. yeah, like you said, they went home for Christmas break. Right. They also had a, a second recess. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then last week there was the Republican Re- retreat. Their, their policy retreat, Yeah, mm-hmm. which I don't think sounded like they were at a spa or anything. But it sure doesn't sound like your day job. Republicans were at this swanky place in Cambridge, Maryland. I'm sure it was on the Eastern it was, Shore. It was yeah, yeah Eastern that. Shore. Okay. Yeah, a lobbyist haven. Right. Uh, very nice place. Uh, so I've got I've got some more. There's uh, Karen Myers of Cantonment, Florida, who we previously interviewed. Said she and her husband missed their mortgage payment. They haven't paid their mortgage so far yet this month. Something that has never happened to them. He's still working, so. They've got a chance, but she said, it's just upsetting. I shouldn't cry. Uh, she was uh, crying on this phone call. I know lots of other people are in the same situation. I've always prided myself on paying everything. Uh, that's a big deal, the house payment, but you've got to have electric. You've got to have water. I know I have until the 15th before they do a late fee. And you have to have food. Of course. In, of, of course, they're, yeah. I, but they're, you know, that's but the it, kind of thing you automatically cut I back mean, the on. The point is that these and other people that you've talked to, and you can read the full story today, uh, later today on HuffingtonPost.com, these are real people with suffering real hardship and real pain because one Republican wouldn't say yes. I, I mean, that's in, in the uh, media term, yeah, one Republican didn't say yes to this one vote, but, then, but, but he voted ha- for it before, saying, I just wanted to get to the debate, uh, and then there's never been a guarantee that Republicans would be for this. No, and then, as you point out, Republicans in the House even less likely to go along with but it. But the, yeah. uh, the debate in the Senate is not even about policy. It's like, you know, we're upset we didn't get to offer our amendments. Uh, sure, this is paid for, but it's not the pay for that we prefer. Yeah, I just had an email from Sam Stein who said hey, you better get to work because you guys have to <laughs> you guys have to work on this story and get this story done. So we'll let you go and thank you for coming in again today. My pleasure. Arthur Delaney, he's the best. Eight six six fifty five press our toll free number. HuffingtonPost.com is where you follow him. We'll be right back. This is the Bill Press Show. This is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Flick it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. Racing dot. I want you to just push the She's going to love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. All right, I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay, so who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect, that's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I, I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Big, big fan. Thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm going to have to block you. Oh, man. Yeah. 
Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. Show. Here we go. The next hour, Igor Volsky from Think Progress joins us at the top of the hour. Then Brad Woodhouse from Americans United for Change and American Bridge. Peter Ogburn, what's up? You remember in the days after the killing of Osama bin Laden, there was a debate over whether or not we would get to see the photographs of him after he yes. had been killed. Yes. Yes. Well, that has been officially finally put to rest. We will not see those because a newly released email that came out last, uh, yesterday uh, confirms that all copies of those photographs have been destroyed. There are no pictures of the dead Osama bin Laden. I don't believe that. I don't know if I believe that either. I do not believe that. That's the official word. Though. Our grandchildren will see those photos. You might be right. We won't. This is the Bill Press Show. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower the heat by 10 degrees. And always keep your water heater set at 120. A little bit of common sense goes a long way. Get more great tips at energysaver.gov. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Hey, good morning, good morning, friends and neighbors. What do you say? It is Tuesday morning, February 11. Great to see you today. This is the Bill Press Show. We're coming to you live from our nation's capital on Free Speech TV, of course, and Direct TV Network, and on our video stream, uh, youtube.com slash Bill Press. I'm sorry, it's youtube.com slash Talker TV. T-A-W-K-R-T-V. That, of course, you can get anywhere on the planet. And this morning I say a big bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. Oui, aujourd'hui c'est l'invasion des Français. The President of France, François Hollande, arrives today for his official state visit. He did a little sneak preview yesterday, touring Monticello with President Obama. But this morning, it is the official royal reception, well, not royal, state reception, I guess, on the South Lawn, followed by a morning uh, full of meetings between the two presidents and their top aides. Then uh, the two presidents have a news conference for all of us in the East Room of the White House at noon, followed by the big state dinner and reception tonight. Tents are set up on the South Lawn. It's going to be a very festive day. In other news... Republicans must have already decided that Hillary Clinton's going to be the Democratic nominee in 2016 because Rand Paul and other Republicans are out there attacking her and her husband Bill every day. Don't you think maybe they should wait to find out for sure that she's running? And maybe, don't you think, they might want to wait until 2016 when people are really thinking about the presidential campaign? Uh, and do people really care what Bill Clinton did with Monica Lewinsky almost 20 years ago now? Mm, I don't think so. And another huge winter storm headed for the south and the northeast. 
while the Midwest remains buried in snow and suffering sub-zero temperatures. All of that coming up right here on The Bill Press Show. This is The Bill Press Show. Visit StopBullying.gov. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Nothing kills a buzz like getting pulled over for buzz driving. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. When some people struggle with their mortgage payments, they become frozen, petrified. Not knowing what to do, they do nothing. But the people who take action are far more likely to get the most positive outcome. Making home affordable is a free government program. Call now to talk one-on-one with a housing expert about the options that are right for you. Real help, real answers, right now. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Did you see the world differently? Did you celebrate the victory? So today, I state clearly and with conviction, America's commitment to seek the peace and security of a world without nuclear weapons. Did you stand up against our greatest threat? Casting around the nation, on your radio, on your TV, and online. This is the Bill Press Show. Another big winter snowstorm heading to Alabama? Really? What's going on here with the world, with climate? Yeah, climate's changing, all right. Changing locations. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you. It is Tuesday, Tuesday, February 11. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the program. So good to see you on your local progressive talk radio station nationwide. So good to see you on Free Speech TV, on your satellite dish and direct TV. And so good to see you on the video stream all around the, uh, the planet. We know you're there in France this morning. We know you're there in the UK. We know you're there in 
Greece, and I don't know where else. I haven't checked the latest list, but uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to the program. England. Ooh, Becky, 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 Stan, Stan. <laughs> no kidding. Tuning in live this morning. Really? Shout Herman, out. Yeah. Herman Keynes. That's in. right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Great to see you this morning, and we are so happy to see you. Welcome you back, and welcome back uh, our Tuesday head of uh, head of Think Progress, Igor Volsky. Gives up his time every Tuesday morning. So good to see you again, Igor. Good morning. Good to be here. Live, direct from Sochi. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, ju- I just finished speed skating and now I'm here. <laughs> you you have been you're just telling me really following the Olympics. Really? I've been watching it every day. I can't stop. I, I'm thinking of is like this taking because two they're weeks in off. So she, really. or is it just you just like the? Winter you Olympics? know, I didn't think I would be excited that it was in Russia, but then I watched the opening ceremony and I got really excited. There's I can understand things in Russian that they're saying that other people couldn't. Oh, it was like I had a little extra insight into the Olympics, so that got me hooked, and I haven't stopped since. Do you think this uh, portrayal of the of Russia, the motherland, and the culture, and the dance, and the music, and everything was I have to say, accurate? I thought the opening ceremonies were beautiful. They were. Really, really. gorgeous. Outside of that little snafu, that ring snafu yeah, that everyone spends too. Exactly. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everything else went perfectly. Yeah, yeah. And so I was, I was, I thought it was very exciting. I thought it was very well done, went through the history, and, and I think also paid some respect to some of the really rough parts of Russia's history, the communism, the deaths, the pogroms. That, there was yeah. a there was giant visual. hammer and sickle yes. coming yeah. out. That was a main was part going, of Russian oh history. My God. Yeah. I understand, but yeah. that was a visual, it was visually striking. Visually yeah. striking, some interesting thing with the lights that they, did, that they did to kind of commemorate everything that happened during that period. Oh, so It is a it, it, I mean, uh, speaking artistically, right, l- from a literary point of view and everything, and musical point of view, it's a phenomenal history. I mean, a great yeah. contribution to world culture. So, Dostoevsky, yeah. Yakov Smirnov, <laughs> lots of g- <laughs> long list, <laughs> long, long list. <laughs> Igor go. Volsky, I Igor mean, Volsky, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Peter, and the fifteen-year-old <laughs> skater who I can't pronounce her oh, name. Uh, Yulia Lipinskaya, I believe. That's the only Lipinska, reason we brought you Lipinska, today. Something That's like the only that. Reason we yeah. You today. Peter Ogbar and Here for all the Russian Russian morning, guys. Good morning. Uh, Alicia Cruz on the phones and Cyprian Balding uh, on the video cam. I have to tell you, you know, um, here's the first rule when you're a uh, talk show host, a reporter, and you go to interview somebody, you have to know, remember, and do your little notes on whom you are interviewing. <laughs> uh, Sam Rubin is a uh, entertainment reporter for KTLA in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Uh-huh. When you're an entertainment reporter in Los Angeles, believe me, I've worked <laughs> in that market. I was offered a job once as entertainment entertainment reporter, and I turned it down. Oh, oh wow. What could have been? Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> a totally uh, <laughs> different show. So he uh, forgot rule number one, and he goes out to interview Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, I, I tell you what, you working for Marvel, the Super Bowl commercial, did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? What Super Bowl commercial? Oh, you know what? Oh. I've admit, my mistake. I, you know see, what? See, you're, you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> he thought he was That's Lawrence Fishburne. I know that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We don't all look alike. Fuck, oh, you're crazy. Right. All black and famous. You are <laughs> guilty. I am, I, I am guilty. Um, I, am question. I am guilty. He thought guilty. you were Bob Dylan. <laughs> right. <laughs> you're the entertainment reporter? I know. I'm you're the entertainment reporter right. for this station? Vlog. You don't know the difference between I know. me and Lawrence my, my mistake, uh, my mistake. I apologize. Uh, really, my big mistake. Let's talk about... It must be a very short line for your job. Uh, <laughs> no. It <laughs> probably would not be hard to get another person to sit right here. Let's talk about Robocop. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. no we're going to talk about Beautiful. you. We're yeah. going to talk about you. Yeah. So this must was be, on live TV? Live television. Yes, live television. He said, there must be a short line for your uh, job. Oh, man. I read an interview once. I love that. How was your Super Bowl, your commercial? And he just... The silence is yeah. <laughs> deafening. Um, er, I read an interview once with Samuel L. Jackson. Says that he has people come up to him every week and, say, and thinks he's Morgan Freeman, and says that he and Morgan Freeman have an agreement that if anybody comes up and says, because Morgan Freeman, this happens to him too, they just sign each other's names. They don't even try and correct the person. So if someone comes up to Sam Jackson and says, hey, you're Morgan Freeman, he just says, Morgan Freeman, <laughs> and see you later. Is that right? Signs his autograph, yeah. You know what I get all the time? Still, I, can right? I get, 
Al Hunt. Al Hunt. I was gonna say Al Hunt. Mm-hmm. Newt Gingrich. Oh, Newt Gingrich. Oh my no. goodness! Don't say that. Who's like twice as fat as I am? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Phil Donahue. I was gonna say, I was gonna say George Clooney. Oh, I would have said George Clooney. Okay. Anyway, our guest here is Judd Lego. Thanks for coming in, Judd. Thank you, boss. <laughs> Igor is here. Brad Woodhouse joins us at the half. And Mary Beth Cahill from the United Auto Workers uh, in the next hour. But first, this is this? the full court press. Yes, indeed. Let's start with the Olympics. Uh, Igor, your your fellow country countrywoman, uh, Olga Graf, she won the bronze in the 3,000-meter Russian speed skating over the weekend. She celebrated in a unique way as she was taking her victory lap. She unzipped her suit (laughs) and then realized, uh uh-oh, there's nothing on under the suit. (laughs) It's a Russian wardrobe malfunction. Russian wardrobe malfunction. She got all the way down to her belly button before she realized (laughs) that she had almost exposed herself. These these suits are so skinny. She got the highest marks of any Yes, exactly. (laughs) That bronze became a gold very quickly. Uh, she, <laughs> everything was kept in place. Nothing came popping out, uh, but it was very, very close. Very, very it's hilarious. Close. There you go. <laughs> Seth Meyers is taking over late night now that Jimmy Fallon is going to uh, the oh. Tonight Show. And yesterday he announced his house band. It is going to be the 8G band led by comedian Fred Armisen from Saturday Night Live. Oh, oh really? Fred oh. Armisen is also a musician, and he's played a couple of oh, uh, parody uh, um, musicians on Saturday Night Live over the years. He's also on the TV show Portlandia. This is a very interesting way that Seth Meyers put it. He said, quote, Fred will curate and lead the band and continue to run it even when he's off shooting Portlandia. So he's going to sort of combine and mix up different hmm. musicians, yeah. but he's yeah. going to be the band leader. He's going to run it through Skype. Yeah, exactly. I, I have high expectations for Seth Meyers. I do, too. Yeah. I do, too. And Washington, D.C., we are very lucky because we are the first city in the nation that gets to try out this new delicacy. 7-Eleven <laughs> stores are offering cheese sticks that aren't coated in breadcrumbs, but they are coated in crushed up Doritos. You can't get them anywhere else in the country except here in the Washington, D.C. area. Like I said, it's just a melty cheese stick that's covered in Doritos uh, coming to you in the uh, Washington, D.C. area, 7-Eleven. So go check it out. Breakfast of champions. Yeah, that's right. Next week I'll try them. It's being test marketed here. All right. Um, Here we go. So, so Igor, I didn't tell you we were going to talk about this, but I have a a (laughs) sick sense of humor. I must first admit (laughs) that. I've noticed, yeah. And this is my favorite story of the day. It's out of Baghdad. Uh, there was this terrorist training camp. Right already right already oh, funny. Yes. Yeah. Already. Outside yeah. of Baghdad. And the instructor was t- t- teaching these terrorists how to blow up car bombs and blow up themselves. Suicide bombers. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. The bomb went off. He killed himself and 20 <laughs> students. I think this is hilarious. Yeah, it's great. This is one way to handle the war on terror. <laughs> <laughs> just you know what? Just let them go, right? I mean, work too well. I mean, yeah. this is God's punishment. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Is it? Is this like? Is this one giant Darwin Award or twenty two small ones? <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> I'm not sure, but I would hope there would be a lesson there, right? yeah. a message that would go out. I'm yeah. Sort of. I'm, I'm surprised not. this kind of story got out. That they. I mean, this is an embar- This is a B- PR disaster. <laughs> <laughs> they really got to get their PR yeah. and check these yeah, terrorists. Yeah, they, they could have kept, the they gate. They should have kept this a secret. Right. Right? You have written about um, Tim Armstrong at AOL, and the headline, I must admit, is a little, uh, made me a little uncomfortable. I'm so do glad. You, wanna, do you were writing about what AOL, AOL CEO got right. He got lots of things right. About like what? Well, we know the backstory, right? Yeah. That he last week on a conference call said that the reason why the company's changing their benefits package is because these two distressed babies they had to cost take them care too of much money cost them two million dollars, and so they had to, as part of this, they had to adopt the changes. Well, a, a lot of people since reversed it. He since he reversed it, cha- it changed it back. Yeah. yeah, A lot of people, me included, on Friday wrote. This is really crazy. It doesn't make any sense because large companies like AOL have something called reinsurance. And that is if they have a lot of payouts they have to give in a given year, they're insured against it so that their entire benefits package isn't in flux. Yeah. 
That's what I wrote on Friday. On Monday, I decided that, you know, maybe there is kind of some truth in the claim that we as a country spend a whole lot of money on childbirth. And it turns out we spend the absolute most of any country on childbirth, and we have the least best outcomes. When it comes to premature babies, we're like number 170 in terms of outcomes. So the question is, what's going on? Why does the country have so many premature babies? And then, of course, those babies and the care that's associated with them drives up health care costs. So a normal delivery is about $5,000. And the employer, if the woman and the family have employer-sponsored health care, pays about that much, $5,000, covers most of it. A premature baby on average, and these babies were a lot more expensive, but on average is $55,000. This is through the first year. So the problem, of course, it always comes back to lack of preventive care, lack of education about how to go through your pregnancy, what to do during your pregnancy, lack of access to health care services. That's part of the reason why we have this problem. We, I think, have a grade of C in America in terms of premature births, too many premature births uh, too frequently, and it's driving up our health care costs. And that, I think, was kind of the kernel of truth in this entire debate about, my goodness, we are my able benefits to keep are them changing. Al- we are able, through the, through the miracles of technology yes. today and the advances of technology, to keep them alive. Uh, and, um, and, and like these two cases w- with AOL. But, but Tim Armstrong was not saying we've got a disconnect in this country because we're not spending enough on preventive health care, therefore there are too many premature babies, and therefore that's part of driving up. He was just saying, I'm a CEO, <laughs> and I res- it seems what it came across yeah. was, I'm a CEO, and I resent having to pay for these two little distressed babies. Well, I think what he was really saying is, look, AOL is having, I know Arthur was just here, but I think AOL is having some business problems. They had to let Patch go, $200 million loss. That was their local reporting outfit. Uh, uh, some other losses in in the company. There's rumors they're going to merge with Yahoo. So there's some instability, and he was trying to use these cases as an excuse for why the benefit packages have to change, when another reason they might have to change is because the business isn't going so well. They've had some losses. And this guy, Armstrong, made in 2012 $12 million. So for him to be complaining about these quote-unquote distressed babies really doesn't look so good. Yeah. If he had talked about the problems with healthcare of the way you did yeah that would have been one thing but he but he didn't he didn't he yeah. was bitching about yeah. the fact that how dare these two employees and then the other thing delaying the contributions to the 401k mm-hmm. until the end of the year means that aol keeps all that money and is able to use all that money all year long That's and the right. employees who if that money had been invested paycheck by paycheck by paycheck would be getting the advantage of all of that interest over yes. that time and perhaps increases in the value of the stock yes which they don't get right so exactly uh, he, he was i think wrong on both counts but yeah. there's nothing like bad publicity to just flip you right around right. exactly igor volsky here with us from uh, think progress think org. now did you realize that if you are an environmentalist you should be out supporting the keystone pipeline. We'll talk about that when we come back. This is the Bill Press Show. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Columbine. Virginia Tech. Tucson. Aurora. Fort Hood. Oak Creek. Newtown. 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 How many more? How many more? How many more colleges? How many more classrooms? How many more movie theaters? How many more houses of faith? How many more shopping malls? How many more street corners? How many more? How many more? Enough. 
Enough. Enough. Enough. Demand a plan. Right now. As a mom. As a dad. As a friend. As a husband. As a wife. As an American. As an American. As an American. As a human being. For the children of Sandy Hook. Demand a plan. No more lists of names. It's not too soon. It's too late. Now is the time. Before we all know someone who loved someone on that list. No more lists. No more who they might have been. No more if we had just done something yesterday. It's time. We can do better than this. We can do better than this. It's time. It's time. It's time for our leaders to act. Demand a plan. Right now. Right now. You! Demand it! Enough. 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 None of us would want to be told we can't marry the person we love. As Americans, we believe in freedom. That's what I fought for as a Marine, and that's what we believe in as Republicans. Freedom means freedom for everyone. I didn't used to understand the importance of same-sex marriage, but after learning my brother was gay, I wanted the same rights for him. He was the best man at my wedding, and I want to be the best man at his. It's only fair that Calvin should have the freedom to marry the person he loves, too. It's time for marriage. At Earth Justice, we defend the environment in the courtroom. Join our fight. When you take a seat, you take a stand. Earth Justice, because the Earth needs a good lawyer. So, I'm kinda new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them. But, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. This is the Bill Press Show. Here we go, 25 minutes after the hour. Wrapping up here with Igor Volsky and his Tuesday visit to the Bill Press Show. Igor Volsky, managing editor of Think Progress, thinkprogress.org. Uh, Igor, a couple of quick um, subjects we haven't gotten to yet. Uh, the Keystone Pipeline, decision pending. We saw the EIS come out uh, recently. And, of course, environmentalists are very upset because the EIS seemed to be kind of saying we can build this thing but no problem. Uh, Ted Cruz says yesterday that he thinks environmentalists have it all wrong. If you are a Birkenstock-wearing, tree-hugging, Greenpeace activist, <laughs> you should love the Keystone Pipeline. <laughs> now, I happen to have a pair of Birkenstocks, which I wear <laughs> almost every day. I don't have them on today because it's too damn cold out. <laughs> Well, what is Do you saying? love the pipeline then? No, you but should. I love my Birkenstock. Oh. I mean, how can. Uh, what's he Oh, saying God, here? I don't even know what the logic is. I think it's something to the effect of that <laughs> the pipeline would be a safer way to transport the crude oil, the dirty, dirty 
oil than, than by, pipe, by, uh, by, by rail. By, by rail. Oh. I think that's yeah, the yeah, argument. Yeah, maybe, but in but. the you know in the same speech, he also argued that fast food workers make seventeen fifty an hour. So why would they complain and strike? something so this is you know he this is kind of his approach to politics is you make a ridiculous claim and you don't really need to substantiate it you just the the weight of your ideology carries it but he painted right. a tired old caricature i mean how I are we not supposed to take that seriously yeah yeah it's just uh, how do you uh, why take him seriously i guess the other thing is yesterday the administration announced that they are delaying the employer mandate for the Yet affordable again. care act Yet again, I mean, come on! Why can't they get it right? <laughs> this just, this just to me, this just gives the opposition more ammunition. Well, I think that at the end of the day, whether there's an employer mandate, whether it's delayed, for the law as a whole, it doesn't make a huge difference. If this was the individual mandate, we'd both be up in arms. Yeah. But the employer mandate and this delay is really for businesses between 50 and 99 employees. That's a very small number right. of businesses who Good are going to be affected. Yep. So they're going to have an extra year to comply with the requirement because they were resisting it. And so the administration decided, let's see if we can work with businesses, give them additional flexibility. And what the opposition says really doesn't matter. If they wouldn't have delayed it, the opposition would have said, oh, this is too stringent and this is cracking down on business and freezing hiring. Right, now, right. they delayed it. They said, oh, this means we should delay the whole thing. So you can't win you and you can't try to please them. You just have to do what you think is good policy. And this isn't a big deal, I don't think. What, what, bother, what worries me is they've had four years to get this right, right? Okay. The rollout of the website, all right, we're, we're beyond that now. But they had to delay this. They delayed this once before. Yeah. You would think they would have used the last year, it seems to me, to get it ready so they wouldn't have to delay it again. Yeah, certainly right? more complex than they imagined, this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> understatement, right? I think that is the understatement <laughs> of the day. All right. Uh, what's hot on Think Progress today? Ooh, you guys have to check it out. You All have right. to just check. I'm not going to spoil it for you. All right. He's going to check it out. He's on his way there to uh, rev it up and put it up there. So check out thinkprogress.org. In fact, they update it so often you have to check it several times. Multiple today. times, yeah. please. Brad Woodhouse is here from uh, American Bridge and Americans United for Change. Next, this Thank you, Igor. Thank you. The Bill Press Show. This is my computer. This is your computer. Let's go on the internet. Let's go. Click it. Yes. Okay. I cursor in between the R and the E. She's gonna love me all over again. That's it. Jamaica, here you go. Here we go. <laughs> Good right. job. Thank you. Thank you. And I did it by myself. Feel smarter. So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Same time next week? Well, of course.
put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. All right. I know this isn't any fun to talk about, but we should. Okay. So who's going to do what? I'll pack the dead batteries. Great. I'll only put what I don't need into a duffel bag. Perfect. That's totally unhelpful. No problem. Meanwhile, I will try to comfort everyone by speaking in a calm voice. And I'll try to get the generator going without any gas. Oh, let's not forget the cell phones, which probably won't work. Right. And who is going to handle supplies? I can forget to do a list for us. Thanks, pal. Well, I think we couldn't be any less prepared. I'm proud of you guys. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov slash kids for tips and information. Hey, thanks for stopping by. You know, I, I followed your character since the first episode. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Big, big fan. Thank you. And listen, your storyline, it makes for incredible TV drama. Thing is, your drug use is very adult content. Too adult for the kids. So I'm going to have to block you. Yeah. Well, have a good one. You're a nice lady. On your radio, on TV, and online, this is The Bill Press Show. All right, 33 minutes after the hour now, the Bill Press Show. Here we are in our nation's capital on Capitol Hill, just down the street from the United States Capitol Building, bringing you the news of the day and brought to you today by the United Steelworkers and their uh, very colorful, outspoken international president, Leo Girard. The United Steelworkers, North America's largest industrial union, representing over 1.2 1.2 million active and retired members. Check out their website at usw.org. He has uh, not just uh, one job now, but two jobs, uh, wearing both hats. Our good friend and frequent guest, Brad Woodhouse, <laughs> used to be communications director of the DNC, now president of Americans United for Change. And for the last week or so, also president of American Bridge. That's right. I'm just like you, Bill. I have many, many That's pursuits. What it is. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> right. I mean, you do more than the show. I mean, you, a writer, and you know, a White House correspondent. So I'm just following in your footsteps. Uh, you know, you've got to keep your plate full. Well, that's I, right. That's right. right. And look, that that is that's important, right? Because it keeps your juices flowing, keeps you active. And so I'm I'm really, you know, love all the work that I'm doing. It's both political and issue based. So I get to I get to do a, a, a little bit of. Everything. Keeps you young. Exactly right. right. So I'm so glad to see you today because the thing that's been bugging me, and it just seems nonstop. There's another article about it in the paper this morning is that uh, Rand Paul thinks he's got the answer to uh, how we're going to deal with Democrats who suggest, who dare suggest that the Republicans have a war on women. <coughs> I know the way we're going to deal about that, Rand Paul says. We're going to talk about Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky, and he won't stop talking about it. Here he is on uh, C-SPAN just a, a few days ago. Well, Senator McCaskill needs to remember what she had to say about Bill Clinton, that she wouldn't want her daughter in the same room with him. So they can't have it both ways. The Democrats can't say, oh, we're the great defenders of women's rights in the workplace, and we will defend you against uh, some kind of abusive boss that uses their position of authority to take advantage of a young woman when the leader of their party, the leader, fu- the leading fundraiser in the country, is Bill Clinton, who was a perpetrator of that kind of sexual harassment you know so they can't have it both ways so politically strategically is this smart well first of all it, it's idiotic it's disgusting um, and and it's going to backfire I mean look the impeachment of President Clinton 
1998, Bill, 16 years ago, yeah, yeah. backfired. It cost Newt Gingrich his speakership. They lost seats in the House. You know, <laughs> uh, uh, Bill Clinton went on to record the, the greatest period of peacetime uh, prosperity of almost any president uh, ever. He left uh, office with high approval ratings. He has high approval ratings. Th- this issue was, you know, was uh, dealt with in the public. It was obviously dealt with in his in his family. He and the Pope are the two probably most popular public figures on the planet. Today. Well, and, and and his wife and his wife. <laughs> and his wife. They, they're yep. they're yep. blessed to be a very popular <laughs> couple. But this is disgusting. And let me tell you what what I think it is. I I, I don't believe this. It, this is definitely not a strategy for dealing uh, with the Democrats on the uh, you know our charges against the Republican on women's issues. It's not that. Um, it, it's not a strategy. Uh, to to beat Hillary Clinton uh, in 2016. It's a strategy to try to convince her to keep out of the race. That's what all of this is. That's what all of this Free Beacon, uh, Clinton papers, uh, trolling through this. Uh, the Republicans know that they are in real trouble in the next presidential election. Demographics, the way we run our campaigns, everything else. And they also know that Hillary Clinton uh, is, is a dynamo who has... Uh, every potential right now to be the next president of the United States. And I think they would like to scare her out of the race. I, I mean, I think they're barking up the wrong tree if they look at what uh, uh, what the Clintons have endured and fought through and won over the years. Well, for, first, just on the war on women thing, I was just I, I noticed last night in, in, uh, doing a little research of my own. In the latest CNN poll, 59% of all women in the country, Republican and Democrat, mm-hmm. 59% of all women, 64% of women over 50 mm-hmm. say the Republican Party doesn't get it when it comes to women. So they got a real problem here, what, right? What's and it? talking about Bill Clinton's not going to make that disappear. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, so so the so the Republican approach is to dredge this up from 15 16 uh 15 16 years ago as opposed to dealing with the fact that Rand Paul, for example, voted against the Violence Against Women Act. They are mm-hmm. all over the country uh, attacking a woman's right to choose. All over the country, uh, they've been attacking a woman's right to access uh, to access reproductive uh, and to access drugs and to access the pill. I mean, it, it's unbelievable their actual record. And of course, on the economy and on health care, all of these things that they oppose, increasing the minimum wage, uh, the Affordable Care Act, all disproportionately help women. They help women in the workforce. They help uh, single moms uh, who are who are in the workforce and facing economic challenges. They have a horrible record for women. And look, morning. Joe, uh, Joe Scarborough said this morning, I don't quote him often, but Joe Scarborough said this morning that this is an insane strategy uh, of the Republicans. He said the, the American public didn't like litigating it before. They're going to hate it even more now. And by the way, I might point out and uh, that Joe Scarborough, uh, who's a friend, and I do, love doing his show too, Joe Scarborough, I first met when he was a Republican member of Congress from the Redneck Riviera, as they call it, uh, and was a manager. He was right. one of the Clinton impeachment That's managers. Right. That's right. So when he is saying, we don't want to go back there, right. people ought to listen to him. Right. I mean, remember, uh, you know, the whole uh, – that's right. The whole thing at the time – um, as unfortunate as it was, uh, the, symp- the sympathetic factor uh, accrued to Hillary Clinton's benefit in terms of uh, well, public perception and approval ratings and, and, and public feelings. I mean, uh, you know, what is Rand Paul trying to do here? Right. Uh, and so they're really going to say, OK, let's judge Hillary Clinton in 2016 by what Bill Clinton, uh, his little fling with Monica Lewinsky, right, right? which is unfair in many right. respects. But then I want to ask you, you you referenced it very quickly. So now you've got that whole attack by Rand Paul. Now, on top of it, uh, the free beacons, what it's called. Yeah, yeah. They came out. These are. It has to be free. I mean, no one would buy it. (laughs) (laughs) The so-called Clinton files or Clinton papers, which are the uh, notes that her friend, Mm -hmm. who's passed now, Diane Blair, uh, took during those days when she would hang out with Hillary, and they would have a conversation, and Diane kept a diary, right. basically, right? So what's what's in there? What's the bombshell? Well, I mean, it, you know, it, if you think of the, the Free Beacon and the Daily Caller is, and Fox as these places that hyperventilate and, and overshoot the runway on these things, 
And then, and, and you know, Drudge hyped this, and then you get into the story and you get into the actual papers. There's just no news there. I mean, I uh, couldn't find uh, that. Th- I th- read th- it. Th- there's no news. Uh, the anything that was maybe not reported before wasn't interesting. It wasn't new in terms of what people thought about that time. It wasn't new in what they thought about Clinton. Surprise, Hillary Clinton uh, hated the dysfunction of Washington. Surprise, Hillary Clinton uh, debated in her mind a lot of approaches uh, to how we deal with the health care situation. You know, she was, you know, she was upset at her at her husband. I mean, uh, she thought the media wasn't being fair. That she thought the media wasn't being fair. I mean, <laughs> that, that's the persistent <laughs> complaint. Uh, well, first of all, right, and that's the persistent complaint of any politician, yeah. any politician yeah. spouse, Absolutely. and it's the persistent complaint of Republicans. Yes. It's all that they talk about. I mean, uh, you, you know, is the unfairness of the media towards uh, you know towards them. So I, I think it, it's much ado about uh, it's much ado about nothing. I think it's unfortunate that so many. You know, so many mainstream outlets decided that it that it was worth you know relitigating. I guess because not every shred of paper that came out uh, had been reported on before, and apparently, if it hadn't been reported on before, it's worth reporting on now, even if it has no news value. I agree with you that I think the real intent here is to uh, scare Hillary out of the race. Right? Uh, why, if I'm Hillary, and I think, oh, this is all they got. This is the best they got. This is, they're going to go back to 1994, 96, 94, 97, whatever. That's, if that's all they got, bring it on. I, I, right? I think, I think, <laughs> don't I you suspect, think? I suspect that, uh, that that's exactly the way, uh, that's exactly the way they're looking at this. I mean, no, look, no one wants to keep dredging up, seeing these things dredged up. But if that's, if that's what they're going to do, I, I would say, I, I would predict this, that it's going to backfire. It'll probably backfire sooner rather uh, then later, and then they'll be back to other uh, to other hyperventilating on issues like Benghazi and uh, health care and whatever else. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I think if this no. is their best play, uh, the Clintons got to feel pretty good about that. All right, now I I understand that having worked for um, our great chair um, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, you might have a certain bias about mm-hmm. Reince Priebus. But Priebus was asked by An- Andrew Mitchell yesterday about this Rand Paul approach. Here is what the chairman of the Republican National Committee says, basically, which is everything's fair game. Is that a legitimate issue, rehashing the 90s, if Hillary Clinton becomes uh, a candidate for president? I think everything's on the table. I mean, I, I don't see how someone just gets a pass on, on, uh, on anything. I mean, especially in today's politics. So, I mean, I think we're going to have a truckload of opposition research on Hillary Clinton, and some things may be old, and some things might be new. But I think everything is at stake when you're talking about the leader of the free world and who are going to give the keys to uh, run uh, the United States of America. So, so he's not telling Rand Paul to back no, off. No, not said, at all. Not yeah. at all. And look, I think people thought that you know, well, Rand Paul is uh, Rand Paul is Rand Paul, and uh, that this you know this oh is no. lunatic oh. fringe. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I mean, so we, we've got we've got uh, Reince Priebus saying it's firmly on the table. We've got it in the truck. We're backing the truck up. Um, you, you know, you've got uh, you've got this effort. Uh, of the free beacon, which I guarantee you was fed to them by uh, uh, by uh, right wing groups that are part of the party uh, part of the party infrastructure. So th- look, this is what you know. This is what they want to do. I think they want to do a number of things here. I think they they, they, they want to try to scare Hillary Clinton uh, not to get in the race. They would love for the controversies they're stoking uh, to to induce a, a competitive Democratic primary for her. And look, I don't have an opinion on whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing for. For her or for for Democrats, but you know th- they would like to exhaust all of this to find ways to chip away at her. And I think there's one other piece here: they want to distract uh, from the problems of Chris Christie, which are a <laughs> real drag uh, on on the Republican Party, particularly on the governors who he's supposed to be representing as RGA chair. All right, he's got two jobs or two ways of keeping track of him right now: uh, American Bridge Pack dot org or Americans United for Change dot org or give us a call three ways at eight six six fifty five press Brad Woodhouse here on the Bill Press Show. Seen on Free Speech TV and online on Talker TV. This is the Bill Press Show. For more
more than 18 months, the members of AFSCME 3299 have been working to secure a new contract with the University of California. With workplace injuries at UC skyrocketing and government fines related to safety deficiencies at UC hospitals skyrocketing, Local 3299's top priority has been safe staffing at the workplace. We've been short of people like for the last five years. They're stretching us thin, which the students are suffering, the faculty suffering, and the patients are suffering. While UC administrators have granted these standards to other UC workers, they have refused to make similar accommodations for AFSCME represented workers who perform the most physically demanding labor at UC. It takes a whole team to take care of the patient. It's not just the RN and it's not just the doctor. The nurses were able to win a great contract and AFSCME workers, the patient care workers and service workers, they're part of the team and they deserve that same fair contract too. We take pride into to working for the university and we feel like the university doesn't, doesn't value the work that we do. But the second class treatment of AFSCME workers doesn't end at safety and staffing. On wages, benefits, and other issues, UC refuses to offer AFSCME 3299 members the same respect they afford their other workers. I have three jobs because what the university pays me is just not enough to, uh, to, to make a living for my family and myself. 99% of service workers in the UC system make so little money that they're eligible for at least some form of public assistance. At the same time, the number of executives in the UC system that have crossed over into making at least a quarter of a million dollars a year has more than doubled since 2008. The University of California has long been a beacon of hope and progress for those struggling for dignity and fairness. With such a proud history, it is disturbing to see the leadership of the university treat its lowest paid workers like second class citizens. All workers at the university deserve equal treatment. A single ember that escapes from a wildfire can travel more than a mile. That single ember can ignite and destroy your home or even your community. You can't control where that ember will land, only what happens when it does. Get Fire Adapted now at fireadapted.org. Online, this is The Bill Press Show. Here we go now, 11 minutes before the top of the hour. In the next hour, Mary Beth Cahill uh, is the political director for the United Auto Workers. A uh, good friend joins us here uh, on the Bill Press Show. Brad Woodhouse uh, is here with us from American Bridge and Americans United for Change. Both great progressive organizations out there doing the Lord's work. <laughs> God Glad bless. I gave, gave you a little time this morning. Peter, what's going on? Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Oh, we love it. Breaking From news. Twitter, the New York FBI Twitter handle, at New York FBI, tweeting just this, no details yet, major mafia roundup this morning in New York and Italy, details to follow. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Wow. Yeah, right? So the FBI is tweeting yes. uh, uh, to tease yes. arrests. Yeah. They're going to have the details and the coming up walk later. And, well, yeah. you know, I, I, you know what? I appreciate I that. I do, too. I appreciate a little <laughs> law enforcement <laughs> social media. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the kind that says, you know, there's a terrorist on the loose or help us, you know, or, or, or help us find this, this perpetrator. Is, this is yeah. great. The, you know what? <laughs> this is the Sicily uh, Queen's connection here. I um, think so. I, I can't yeah, wait that, to hear some of the nicknames that are going to be coming oh, up later on today. Oh, man. But does it, wouldn't this maybe like alert some of these mafia people to go into hiding or to, you know? I right? think or do you they think probably got everybody oh, they, <laughs> under wraps. Before they tweet, yeah. they probably. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, wow. I hope so. So, so stay be, tuned. Well, and how many, uh, how many of these mafia bosses follow 
FBI on Twitter. I mean, that's you know. I mean, that's, that's also. True. I mean, there's another. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're gonna, are they are they are they, are they on tweet debt from the bada bing? I mean, you know. I mean. <laughs> um, Brett Marco Rubio said something yesterday. He said that I uh, actually kind of agree with. Uh, he said um, that any questions about whether or not he ever smoked pot. Are irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would agree right. unless he's one of these guys who says we have to, you know, keep right. our marijuana laws as tough as they are. Right, right. Because right. Boom, boom, boom. But I think about this point. If if does that, I, I really believe this is any politician today who's running for office who says they never smoke pot. Well, I got questions about that. Well, I mean, it is, it is <laughs> yeah, it, it does raise, it does raise some questions. I, you know, it's an interesting point. I mean, you know, there's the, you know, I, I tried it, but I didn't inhale. I did right, it. Right. I actually inhaled or I'm not going to comment. I, I respect yeah. somebody who doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to comment on, you yeah. know, on that. I thought his reasoning was, was was okay. Yeah. Um, no, you know, he should have just said yes. I think when he says yeah. it's irrelevant, it does mean yes. But <clears throat> probably it probably does. Yeah. But I, I respect his right not to not to answer the question. I I, I do I do think that uh, and I do and look I actually appreciate uh, in in this respect people like Rand Paul talking about issues like sentence Absolutely. reform uh, and and drug sentencing reform in you know yep. in, in particular. So you know if if Marco Rubio wants to take the right side of this, then people shouldn't hound him. But if he wants to take the uh, puritanical side of it and the tough law and order side of it, then you know maybe you should answer the question. Uh, as a Democratic strategist, head of these two organizations, you feeling reasonably good about 2014? Or are you worried? Well, I, look, it's you know it's, got about a minute. It's a tough cycle, six year itch. Uh, but I, I, I'll say this: I, I think we have the best political committees. Uh, in the history of American politics, the DSCC, the DCCC. I know those uh, people very well. The work that we're doing in American Bridge and in American United for Change, I think, is uh, is really is They're really also important. Raising lots of money, raising right. lots of money, really, re- and 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 people in these House races in particular, that is so important. And uh, Nancy Pelosi ha- is looking at this like a laser. And I, I think uh, I think we'll fare uh, reasonably well. I really I really do. I think we have a shot at taking back the House. I really believe we'll hold on uh, uh, hold on to the Senate. And I think they have a number of governors that are in trouble. Uh, they have. They have. Enough. They do. They do. Yeah, I believe they. Uh, I, I believe they do. I mean, I think Scott Walker is is beatable. I think there there probably some uh, uh, there probably some others. Uh, and of course, they've got Chris Christie, which is a drag a- across the whole party right now. And we have learned that these. Re- I hope we have learned that these Republican gov- these governorships. And these state legislative races are really important. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I for mean, I national at, policy. <clears throat> well, for national policy and for the policy and in the states. Yeah. I mean, if, if, well, if you look at what's happened with the states who have re- refused to expand Medicaid under the Affordable Care Act, for example, it's a travesty. Five million people who uh, won't have access to affordable health care because Republicans just don't don't want to do anything uh, uh, anything that they think. Uh, that the pre that the, uh, would help the president, right? It's not I, about helping the president; it's about yeah. helping th- their constituents, right? The people and that I, were hired to represent, and the federal government pays for a hundred percent of it for That's the first exactly three years. Exactly right. That's crazy. That's exactly right. Hey, Brad, great work! Thanks so much for coming in. Great. Always good to see you. All, All right. right, thank you. Have a good one. We'll be right back. Tell you what the president's up to today with the president of France. This is the Bill Press Show. In the early 20th century, the war to end all wars didn't end war at all. It stoked the fires of change. A traumatized world was ripe for change. The world was ready for modernism. Modernists wanted to forget history, or at least reinterpret it. More than just a style, modernism applied to virtually all forms of creative expression. Innovative artists like Picasso, Escher, Dali, they all started looking at their world differently. Other artists tried painting light itself. These were the Impressionists. Surrealists went a bit further. We had entered the age of the isms. Cubism, symbolism, futurism, constructivism. All these new modern ways of looking at the world blew people away. When it came to architecture, modernists were intrigued by emerging technology. Concrete, glass and steel featured heavily in their buildings. Modernists believed that they could design a better society. Ornamental indulgence was considered a frivolous waste of effort. They thought function should always dictate form. 
and that mankind's intelligence, creativity and capability for radical thinking should be celebrated. Take the Russian inventor Georgi Krutikov. He suggested an idea for a city held aloft by electrical currents. This at a time when there was barely enough wattage to keep the lights on. Not everything they designed was a resounding success. But you could argue modernism was the single most influential movement of the 20th century. From house music to house wares, tables and chairs to graphic design, all have been created by the aesthetics and ideas of modernism. Hey, too much going on this morning. Two hours is not enough. We have to have a third hour to cover all the news of the day, which we will. Sorry to lose you on Free Speech TV, but your option is to uh, jump over to a video stream at youtube.com slash talker TV in the next hour. Disturbing reports that the United States is considering yet again using a drone, to, a drone strike to kill an American in Pakistan. At least this time we know the administration is thinking about it ahead of time. All of that and more in the third hour. is the Bill Press Show. In the next hour, Juana Summers uh, from Politico uh, covering defense issues will join us at the top of the hour. Then we'll be joined by Mary Beth Cahill from the United Auto Workers. President Obama, in just uh, over an hour now, will uh, in, uh, welcome to the White House for the official state visit President Francois Hollande of France. Uh, they will meet through the morning and then at noon... The two presidents will hold a joint news conference in the East Room of the White House. I will be there uh, with my hand raised. I hope we get a question in. Uh, the president has a meeting this afternoon with Defense Secretary uh, Chuck Hagel. And then this evening, the state dinner for the president of France and a reception following on the South Lawn. Uh, I don't know. Somehow my invitation to that one got lost in the mail, I guess. But uh, I'll be there for the joint this news conference. This is the Hour number three Press coming up. Show.
Broadcasting around the nation, on your radio, on your TV, and online. This is the Bill Press Show. It is the French invasion of America today. Yes, we even are proud to say the word French fries again. With President Francois Hollande here at arriving at the White House just a little less than an hour from now. Good morning, everybody. We're on the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue, the Bill Press Show up around the Capitol. I'll be down at the White House for the joint news conference with uh, President Obama and President Hollande at noon. Meanwhile, hour number three of the Bill Press Show here on your local progressive talk radio station and around the globe on Talker TV, youtube.com slash Talker TV. Great to see you this Tuesday morning, February 11. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the program and get ready to uh, sound off about the issues of the day at 866-55-PRESS. Send us your comments on Twitter at BP Show and uh, how we keep the conversation going. Your comments also on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bill Press Show. Look who's here, Peter Ogburn and Elisa Murphy. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. <coughs> Pardon me, as well as all of you. With Alicia Cruz also, um, ready for your phone calls. Uh, Cyprian Bolding got the cameras and the lights on for the video stream. Again, Talker TV and all of you watching across the United States and around the globe. We talked a lot yesterday about Michael Sam, uh, defensive end for the University of Missouri, up for the NFL draft in May. And over the weekend uh, to ESPN, and in an interview with the New York Times, 
He uh, came out as a proud, open, college graduate, African-American, and gay man. Uh, yesterday, John Stewart said, oh, yeah, this is why he likes football. Who is this gay football player? Oh, probably a kicker, huh? Am I right? A kicker. You know, he's gay kicker. <laughs> he's not like a real player. At 6'2", 260 pounds, University of Missouri defensive lineman Michael Sam used skill and strength to lead the SEC in sacks last year. Sam was the SEC Defensive Player of the Year, the best defensive player in the best conference in college mm -hmm. football. Mm. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's as though sexual orientation has nothing to do with physical strength. <laughs> Well said. Leave it to John Stewart. Juana Summers from Politico joins us here at the top of the hour about news that the United States is uh, announcing a planned drone attack against an American citizen overseas. And Mary Beth Cahill, political director for the United Auto Workers, joins us a little bit later in the hour. But first... This is the Full Court Press. Just a couple of other stories making news. Uh, congratulations to radio talk show host Michael Smirkanish. He is the newest member of CNN's television family. It was announced yesterday that he is going to start a weekend show Saturday mornings at 9 a.m. every week there on CNN. You can Interesting about that, that he has been a... Uh, a very a frequent guest host for Chris Matthews. Yes, as host of Hardball. So I guess over his days at MSNBC are over. Looks like those are done. U.S. bobsledder Johnny Quinn made news over the weekend. He's the guy that had to bust through the bathroom door that locked shut in Sochi. Yep. Well, his bad luck didn't end uh, earlier in the uh, the week. He got stuck on an elevator that couldn't open. No. The door stuck on the elevator. He tweeted a photo of himself trying to open the elevator's door, but they were shut. Did he break through the elevator? He door? did not break through the elevator <laughs> door, elevator doors, but he did finally get out. And Southampton, Virginia is about an hour's drive south of Richmond, and there is a church congregation there led by Pastor Alan Parker. They don't believe in material things, and they take it very seriously, so seriously, in fact, that they show up to church without their clothes on. Oh, my kind of church. South <laughs> <laughs> White Tail Chapel. <laughs> You can uh, no. make your joke there. <laughs> w, uh, WIST, uh, WISTV out of Richmond, Virginia is the one to report this. Uh, White Tail Chapel led by Pastor Alan Parker. Again, they said they don't believe in material things, so he leads it completely nude sometimes. So there you go. Make the drive down. All right. They found Jesus, or <laughs> Jesus found them. Or I don't know. Uh, here we go. Yes, a report uh, first yesterday from Associated Press and reported this morning on the front page of the New York Times, a headline, U.S. Debates Drone Strike on American. What is this all about? We turn to one of our good friends from Politico defense reporter, Juana Summers, joining us on our news line this morning. Hello, Juana. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, who? first of all, who are we talking about? Who is this American do we know, and where is he? So the United States officials, of course, have not said the identity of this, this of the alleged operative or where he's believed to be located, saying that that would um, in increase security concerns. But the really big debate is that they're having internally right now is whether or not to approve this strike. They've said that this person is accused of being part of the al-Qaeda network and involved in ongoing plots against um, American targets. Certainly this administration has gotten a lot of scrutiny for its so-called kill list. And mm -hmm. under the new counterterrorism guidelines that the president adopted last year, um, the president would have to get approval by the Justice Department to add this individual to such a list. Well, uh, I know they haven't officially said, but isn't it generally recognized that this person is operating out of Pakistan? Yeah, I mean, that—that that is the what I'm hearing in national security circles and kind of the conventional wisdom. And obviously, um, al-Qaeda is a seriously concern in Pakistan. The group there is tied to military organizations that have previously carried out assaults against the United States forces in Afghanistan. So that does add to a heightened sense of alarm with this particular situation. Now, using a drone uh, to strike and kill an American citizen on foreign soil, 
has been done before by this administration, uh, particularly this uh, cleric and his son in Yemen. So why the why the fuss over doing it again? This is a really big deal, and if the president does in fact try to do this, and I would personally argue the fact that he's even publicly weigh, weighing this decision is making him confront one of the um, probably one of the most pressing national security issues of his presidency. Obviously, last year in the White House acknowledged that four United States citizens had been killed in drone strikes right. during his time in office. That was a huge disclosure and set off a firestorm when it came to people questioning civil liberties um, because they're, you're killing an American without due process in court, and they were also very um, critical of the secrecy surrounding such a decision. So this is a really big deal for this administration. And turning back to a topic I'm sure that this president particularly did not want to revisit. And so... And that's why he gave his speech, I think it was at Georgetown, wasn't it, River, uh, where he said, okay, we are going to change the way we do things in the future when it comes to jo- dr- drones, correct? Now, you mentioned... That's absolutely- Go ahead. Yes, that's absolutely correct. That's why he gave that speech. That he did defend in those speeches. Um, I believe one was at National Defense University. <laughs> that's right. He defended yeah. the government's right to kill Americans, who was just plotting against Americans, particularly citing al-Qaeda but also said that it should face special scrutiny from Justice Department. So what we're seeing right now is him needing to, quote-unquote, put his money where his mouth is to actually go to the Justice Department to use more rigor in a program that has been highly criticized for its secrecy and kind of wobbly legal ground. Now, I also recall, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that he said there was going to be one other change, that he wanted to shift the responsibility uh, and the operational side of these drones uh, in these attacks from the CIA to the Pentagon, right? So is that also at play here? I mean, if, if, if the Justice Department says yes, then who would carry out the mission? Um, you know, it's, I'm not clear who exactly would carry out this mission, but it is not clear to me that that transition has actually been made from drones moving from the CIA to the Pentagon. That was something that I believe came out in a foreign policy report about a year ago. And it's still an ongoing process. Ongoing process. There, it does not seem that there's actually been a, been a switch. This kind of, there's kind of a conundrum there as to which agency right. would actually uh, be be able to strike him. No, I think you're right. I don't think the I think the change was promised, but may not have taken place yet, uh, which could have some significance because Pakistan, um, you know, they may wink, wink at the CIA's. Uh, activities on their territory, but they've publicly said we don't want the American military <laughs> in any way operating on our territory. Uh, so that could be that could be a little wrinkle here. Let's go back to the Justice Department. So, so the president has to have um, the green light, basically, from Justice Department lawyers. Could they possibly say no to the president? I mean, I think it's entirely possible that they could. The Justice Department, the way I understand it, um, would have to show that killing this person using military action is both legal and constitutional, paving the way for either the Pentagon or the CIA to use um, lethal action, because then I think it would, they would be ruled as an enemy combatant under the authorization for use of military force, which, as you, know, you and your listeners probably know, is the resolution that was voted in after the 9-11 attacks in order to target al-Qaeda. So I think that's the legal ground you're looking at here. And then would have to figure out from there, what do you do if the Justice Department says no? And that would obviously create a huge issue for this White House and kind of doing the first test case of this new policy. Wouldn't they also have to show that it would be impossible or extremely difficult uh, to uh, apprehend this person and to bring him to trial? You're absolutely right. And that's one of the things that the president said in that speech that you mentioned last year. He said that there, that capture can't be feasible and that there can't be any other reasonable alternatives to address this threat. So it has to show that this is not somebody that we could just go out and capture. A kill operation has to be essentially the last resort to subdue someone who is a continuing imminent threat to um, the United States people, the people of the United States. Now, one, it seems to me that if I were the president of the United States and I'm wrestling with this decision, the last thing I would want is to pick up the New York Times or Politico or uh, AP and read about it, right, on the front page. So uh, why, why was this, how do we know about it? Was this leaked? Do they want us, is this a way of making it look like the president's really weighing this decision carefully? Uh, or what's the, what's the logic here, right, or the reasoning behind all this, the sudden publicity about this? 
Well, first of all, kudos to my colleagues in the national security press for constantly breaking news on a beat that I can tell you from experience is not easy to cover. But I, um, also, I'd like to know that this isn't a story that's coming out with an official White House comment. If you look at the stories from the Associated Press, from the New York Times, from the yeah. Washington Post, you'll note that the Justice Department, the Pentagon, the CIA have repeatedly declined to comment. They're not, they are not getting into this issue. These, the named sources on these stories are folks from the outside, civil rights groups, professors at prominent universities who study this type of law, uh, lawmakers. This isn't coming from the administration. That said, if I, had to, if I was a wagering kind of person, I would guess that this has been leaked out either from committees on the Hill, from people within the administration, mm-hmm. or from foreign sources, because for a story of this magnitude with this much information, there, I mean, there's no way that this just comes out of thin air. You've got to have some pretty deep sourcing to get your hands on this one. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Jay Carney, by the way, at our briefing yesterday would not comment uh, at all, just refused in in any way to have anything uh, to say about it. And uh, uh, I would also imagine there's one particularly suspected terrorist who is probably booking a flight to uh, uh, Jamaica or someplace pretty far from Pakistan right now. Uh, Juana Summers, stay on top of this for us. We'll talk to you about it again. Thanks, Juana, for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, Politico. Excellent reporter for Politico covering defense issues. Wanda Summers at Politico.com. This is the Bill Press Show.
25 minutes after the hour from the United Auto Workers, Mary Beth Cahill, in the uh, next segment, next half hour of the uh, Bill Press Show. Uh, meanwhile, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, this is a very, very festive day at the White House. If you go outside the White House today, you will see flying on the uh, lamppost up and down Pennsylvania Avenue uh, uh, two flags, the flag of the United States and the flag of <laughs> France, because the president of France, who arrived uh, yesterday and uh, was, did a sort of off-the-record, unoffi- not off-the-record, but an unofficial visit, with President Obama down to Monticello, very significant because, of course, Thomas Jefferson was our uh, second envoy to France following Benjamin Franklin. He was a r- real Francophile, um, brought all kinds of stuff from France back here, introduced in many ways the American people to the French culture, uh, kept his ties with France, welcomed and entertained Lafayette at Monticello, so a huge h- historical significance there. Um, uh, and uh, President Obama talked yesterday about uh, some of the stuff that they saw together at Monticello. I thought this was an appropriate way to start a state visit uh, because what it signifies is the incredible history between the United States and France. A very good place to start. So this morning, uh, about a half an hour from now, on the South Lawn of the White House, the official welcome to the White House by President Hollande, by President Obama to President Hollande. Then they will have a, a series of meetings this morning uh, at the White House. The president, the two presidents, then will come into the East Room of the White House. I will be there for their joint uh, news conference. And uh, this evening, the big state dinner with um, Francois Hollande. Uh, the big question was, who's he going to bring? <laughs> As his guest, while well, he's coming, stag tonight. There'll be uh, no nobody accompanying him. So, no girlfriend, mm-hmm. no mistress, nobody accompanying him. But uh, you know what? It, it reminds me. I can't believe. I mean, we do have this historic relationship with France, and remember, France saved our butt during the revolution. We wouldn't be the independent country we are today without without the support of France, most likely. Um, and we've always had this wonderful close relationship. And then we fell apart, right? Was it 10, or 10 years or so ago? Because it, France would not support our war in Iraq. And so crazy people in this country turned against France. Remember, they, in Congress, they changed the name of French fries to Freedom Fries. Freedom Fries. They changed the name of French Toast to Freedom Toast. There were idiots around the country, uh, 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 liquor dealers, right, who were destroying their supply of French wine, taking it out on the street and, and breaking all the bottles apart because we can't have anything to do with France. I mean, how like, it's so embarrassing to think that as a nation, so many people fell into that. Fox News, that was all they did, was bash the French day in and day out. You know, I, I would just hope President Obama today might at some point say to President Hollande, I just want to say, you were right about Iraq. We were wrong about Iraq. This Vive la France! is the Bill Press Show.
Seen on Free Speech TV and online on Talker TV, this is The Bill Press Show. Here we go now, 33 minutes after the hour on Tuesday, February 11. It's The Bill Press Show coming to you live from Washington, D.C., booming out to you coast to coast on your local progressive talk radio station and booming out to you worldwide on our video stream at Talker TV, youtube.com slash Talker, T-A-W-K-R TV. Brought to you today by the Laborers International Union of North America, the good men and women of the Laborers Union, under President Terry O'Sullivan, Building a Better America. You bet. That's their website. Check it out. Liuna, L-I-U-N-A, Builds America. Dot org. Uh, before we move on, Peter, a quick breaking news, bre- Bill. Oh my God! Breaking Again, news. breaking news. I can't stand it. Yes, indeed. Live uh, from Sochi, NBC Uh-oh. has made the announcement they are pulling Bob Costas because of off his eye of infection. The evening broadcast because Whoa. of his eyes. His eyes. If you've been watching any of the yeah. evening coverage, uh, oh, he had an eye infection when they started That's in horrible. one eye, and it spread to his other eye. Poor guy. Whoa. And the poor guy last night did it with two and. Inf- eyes. Matt Lauer will be stepping into the booth and taking over for Bob Costas starting tonight. Wow. Boy, talk about an on-the-job uh, Ill- illness, right? I hope. Yeah. I hope for all for the sake of all Americans that Bob Costas recovers and comes back soon because he is Mr. Olympic. No, he is. Yeah. So that would happen. The idea would happen during the Olympics. Thing. How sad. Horrible. Wow. All right. So well, Matt Lauer will be in tonight. Send our best wishes to him. Uh, she is one of the smartest political minds in this country. Uh, she's a good friend. We remember her as a campaign manager for Senator John Kerry as in 2004, as well as many other important positions. She's now legislative and national political director for the great United Auto Workers. Mary Beth Cahill joining us on our news line this morning. Mary Beth, how are you? It's so nice to talk to you, Bill. Have, it's been a long time. It has been a long time. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, so much so much to talk about happening in the labor front, but on the UAW front, article recently in the New York Times about the big battle down in Tennessee to organize uh, a new plant down there. It's a Volkswagen plant, correct? It is. Tell us about that. Well, how is it going, and what's the issue? Uh, the election starts on Wednesday. It will go Wednesday through Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Volkswagen requested the election, which is unusual. Yeah. And um, there are about 1,570 workers who are eligible to vote in it. And the question is whether or not they want to be represented in, by the UAW. One of the big things here is that the UAW has worked with Volkswagen to develop the idea of having a European-style works council in Chattanooga. And that is where labor and management, blue and white collar workers, mm-hmm. sit down together and talk about the future of the plant and what is going well in the plant, what needs to change, you know, ideas on manufacturing. You know, really, the the Germans call it co-determination. And a concept that has worked so extremely well in Europe. It has worked very well. Actually, in every plant, Volkswagen plant around the world, Hmm. um, there is a works council uh, everywhere except the United States and China. Now, how does how does management, uh, what's management's attitude about this idea that uh, there might be a union in their uh, plant? Uh, they have signed a neutrality agreement. Mm-hmm. They are um, hands off on um, on the election. They are leaving it up to the workers to decide whether or not they want to be represented. That um, in itself is news, right? It is very <laughs> unusual. Yes. Yeah, but you know, this is something that. UAW and um, Volkswagen have been working on over the course of several years, and it's all coming to fruition Wednesday through Friday of this week. And uh, we hope that goes in the right direction, but there has been opposition, so if it's not coming from uh, Volkswagen, who's the opposition, where's the opposition coming from? Um, You know, it's funny because this is unlike most uh, labor fights where it's management versus labor, it's really outside groups, uh, Republican right-wing outside groups uh, versus both Volkswagen and the UAW. And that is Americans for uh, Tax Prosperity, Uh Tax Fairness, I beg your pardon. Uh, Um, It is... The Koch brothers (laughs) raised their ugly heads again, huh? Yesterday, um, a group of Republican state legislators had a press conference and said that if 
UAW were um, chosen to represent Volkswagen workers, there would be no more economic development funds for Volkswagen, or that it would oh. be very difficult to vote for tax, um, economic development funds in, uh, the, in the Tennessee legislature. So the stakes are pretty high. I would say the stakes are pretty high. So uh, the, the outside, and I guess they see this, what, as a camel's nose under the tent? Is that the problem? You know, for them? I think that this is um, a right-to-work state, obviously, mm. and it is um, the first uh, transnational um, car plant that uh, is where it seems as though there is a, a good chance that um, it will become unionized. And uh, I think that some of our opponents, um, some of the Republican right wing, would like to stop this in its tracks. Now, across the nation, again, we're talking with Mary Beth Cahill from the United Auto Workers. You know, it's, uh, we've t- uh, talked to the president before, and you know how to reach their website and find out more about their good work and the resurgence of the American auto industry, thanks to President Obama, I might add, UAW.org. So, Mary Beth, I mean, in looking at Detroit, very much part of the comeback was the uh, cooperation of the of the United Auto Workers in in, in efforts to bring back the American auto industry. And uh, workers gave up a lot, right, in terms of salary and benefits. They did. Uh, how is that going? Are they getting any of that back? And, and uh, generally across the board, you know, how are, how, how are the auto workers faring as the auto companies are doing better and better? Well, obviously the manufacturing resurgence in the United States is led by um, the auto industry. And auto workers are a really big part of that. I mean... They really understood um, during the auto crisis that no one cared as much about the car companies as the workers did. Mm -hmm. And um, so they took very painful cuts in um, in retiree um, benefits, in um, raises. And now we have worked through uh, our first big three um, contract, and we are working at um, building back. This past year, all three uh, have given very generous profit sharing to um, uh, all of our workers. Our second-tier workers have gotten a, a, an over $3 raise um, hmm. in the course of the contract. So we, uh, you know, the workers are the UAW's first priority, and we are working our way back. Uh, and so what is the, back to Tennessee for a second, what is the argument What is the adv- that the union has made or, or workers there have made for forming a union at, 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 at uh, the Volkswagen plant? You know, what will this bring them? You know, I think that under the, the Volkswagen model, where everywhere around the world there is the um, matter of co-determination, in the United States they can't have um, a works council without representation by a labor union under our, our labor law. And I, I think that they see that... Um, the UAW will be a partner. Just the fact that, unlike, you know, it, it takes a lot of flexibility to say, we're going to change the way that we do things. Mm-hmm. We're going to look at a different model of representation. You know, the first one since the National Labor Relations Act was signed. And, um, and we're going to try something else, and we're going to try to see if we can make it work. It worked for us during the auto crisis when we put our shoulder to the wheel with the companies, and that's what we're doing in Chattanooga for the workers. In, at Volkswagen. And so you'll be uh, not just a voice, you'll be at the table, not just uh, have your voice heard. You'll be yeah. there at the table helping make those decisions. On that, on, in, that uh, in that light, uh, one of the huge success stories, of course, is GM. Uh, Mary Barra, first woman CEO of uh, GM, uh, which is a great achievement in itself. It's reported in the New York Times this morning that as CEO of GM, she will be paid Fourteen point four million dollars this year. Um, what do you think? Is she worth it? Well, you know the thing is that is one of the really. I mean, I, first of all, I applaud Mary Barra. It is wonderful that a woman is the head of a major manufacturing Amen. company. It yeah. is an enormous achievement that you know I I have been involved in trying to advance women in my whole for my whole life, and yep. so this is <laughs> tremendous. But, you know, it's against the backdrop where um, workers' pay is stagnated and the pay of the um, executives has just gone through the roof. 
and now you know they own they earn on average two hundred and seventy three times what a worker on the line does, and that 's not mary barris um, mm-hmm. uh, salary it's it 's the average and you know there's something wrong with this, and I think that that is why, following Pope Francis, uh, who said that you know we have to think more of those who are less fortunate than us, we have to think more about the middle class. The United States Congress is really turning its its um, head for the first time in a long time to raising the minimum wage, which is the bottom line um, way to achieve greater fairness for American workers. Yeah, uh, the minimum wage and refusing to extend unemployment insurance. I mean, it's just a, a you know a, 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 a disconnect there at all. Yeah, and I. I agree with you. I, I salute. I love the fact that Mary Barra is head of CEO. Uh, I don't begrudge her that salary. I just uh, wish that uh, GM would spread the wealth a little bit more. Exactly. Right? <laughs> because there are a lot of other people uh, who, who, haven't, who haven't shared uh, in those good times in terms of benefits and salary. Mary Beth, it's great to talk to you in your new job. I uh, hope to get you in studio one of these days and we can explore some of these issues uh, a little further. Um, Good luck Wednesday through Thursday in Tennessee. Thank you so much. All right, we'll talk to you again soon. I don't. Thanks. Mary Beth Cahill from the United Auto Workers. This is the Bill Press Show. Seen on Free Speech TV and online on Talker TV. This is the Bill Press Show. 
Here we go with uh, 12 minutes now before the top of the hour. Everything all set on the south lawn of the White House to welcome the president of France, uh, where he will spend the morning in meetings with uh, the President Obama and then a joint news conference, the two of them, in the East Room of the White House at noon. And uh, so I've got my jacket on today. I've got my tie on. I'm on my way. Aren't you glad that they're doing it tonight and not tomorrow night when we're supposed to get like the worst snowstorm of the ste- season here? It would be nice to have the president of France snowed in at the White House, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, we are expected, uh, I know, with all due apologies to our good friends in Chicago who have had five feet of snow so far, I know we sound like wimps and whiners when we always talk about all the snow we're going to get. We had, after all, we had probably an eighth of an inch this week. It was harrowing. Yeah, I know. It was a we could hardly right We in. could hardly deal with it. Uh, well, uh, okay, here is my, I know, I apologize. But here is my favorite story of the day, which is uh, right out to me, right out of Mad Magazine, or mm-hmm. right out of Saturday Night Live. Um, so, w- one of the sickest things that happens these days are these car bombs, right? And these car bombers and these suicide bombers. Uh, and you wonder what gets into their mind and where also they learn about it. Well, I guess you have to figure it out. There are little t- schools for suicide bombers. Sure. There is, it was, in fact, a training camp for suicide bombers outside of Baghdad. There is no longer, because yesterday at the training camp for, uh, outside of, at the terrorist training camp, uh, there were 20 students gathered around their uh, instructor learning how to blow themselves up. Uh, The instructor made a mistake. Oops. Whoopsie. He blew himself up and all 20 students. 20, you know what? 21 terrorists, would-be terrorists, dead, to which I say, that's a good start. Yeah, I like it. You know? Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, it's who a, needs drones? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just get a couple of hapless, a, that, hapless terrorists. That's, I mean, I remember that old joke about, what do you call a, a ship that sinks with 500 lawyers on it, right? Yeah, right. A good start, a good or something, start which yeah. was a sick joke, too. Right, but, the, but this one, this is God's punishment, and I hope they learn... <laughs> they learned the lesson, or oh, they probably would not. Um, no particular uh, segue here, so let me just jump to the next story. Uh, my other favorite story of the day is uh, crazy Ted Cruz um, was at the uh, American Heritage uh, Foundation yesterday, and they were uh, having a, a little conservative gab fest about issues of the day. Uh, one of which was Keystone Pipeline. You know, the industry is really hot for this. Uh, the environmental community, is, uh, rightfully so, I think, sees this as um, the worst decision that President Obama could, be, could make if he really cares about climate change. But Ted Cruz says that environmentalists have it all wrong. If you are a Birkenstock-wearing tree-hugging, Greenpeace activist, you should love the Keystone Pipeline. God. What? <laughs> Hello? A pain in the ass. Now, l- let me just admit up front. I am a Birkenstock-wearing tree-hugger. It's true. Okay? I have two pair of Birkenstocks, actually. I've got one pair in Washington. I have one pair in California. <laughs> So, uh, so I don't have to take them with me. <laughs> that's, that's good. And if I had, I'm surprised I don't have a pair here at the studio. Let there be no doubt about your tree hugger hippie credentials. All right. Okay. Yeah. And I got my start in environmental politics. I'm there. And I have to tell you, no, as an environmentalist, <laughs> this is a bad project that should not be approved. It's not going to create that many jobs. And it will just continue our addiction to foreign oil. And finally, just in a little bit of time we have left, i gotta got to play this for you one more time. Out in Los Angeles, entertainment reporter Sam Rubin for station oh, K- yeah. KTLA. He is interviewing Samuel L. Jackson, and he screws up, and, and I guess he thinks he's actually interviewing Lawrence Fishburne instead. Uh, you, have to, you should know, before you start an interview, particularly a celebrity who you are talking to, Samuel L. Jackson will not let him get away with it. Here's how that interview went. Uh, I, I tell you what, you working for Marvel, the Super Bowl commercial, did you get a lot of reaction to that Super Bowl commercial? 
What Super Bowl commercial? Oh boy. What Super Bowl commercial? Oh, you know what? I've been my mistake. I you know See what? what? See, you you're as crazy as the people on Twitter. Right. I'm not Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> ah. oh, that's my fault. Oh, I know boy. that. That was my fault. Uh, my mistake. You know what? We don't all look alike. We are all black and famous. You are all guilty. Look black and famous. I am, I am guilty. Um, I am guilty. I am guilty. He thought guilty. you were Bob Dylan. Right. <laughs> you're the entertainment reporter. I know. I'm you're the entertainment you're reporter right. for this thing. And you don't know the difference between I know. me and Lawrence Fishburne. My, my mistake. Uh, my mistake. I apologize. Gosh. Really, my big mistake. Let's talk that about. That must be uh, a very short line for your job. <laughs> yeah. no, uh, uh, it probably would not be hard to get another person to sit right here. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about Robocop. Oh, hell no. <laughs> uh, hell no. He's not going to talk about anything else. He tries to move on. And he, no, no. Oh, no. No, no. It must be a very short line for yeah, your job. We're going to sit oh, right here for God. just a second. What a goofball. All right. <laughs> my turn back with a party shot next. This is the Bill Press Show. Parting Shot with Bill Press. This is the Bill Press Show. Hey, will somebody please explain to me why Rand Paul, who's running for president in 2016, keeps talking about Bill Clinton and says that because of what Bill Clinton did with Monica Lewinsky, Democrats can never any longer accuse Republicans of waging a war on women. I mean, this makes no sense at all. Yeah, what Bill Clinton did almost 20 years ago was wrong. 
but so is the Republican Party's treatment of women for the last 20 years. They are still officially anti-choice. They oppose equal work for equal pay. They opposed the Violence Against Women Act. They oppose Obamacare, which helps women most. They oppose including contraception for women as part of health insurance. They oppose raising the minimum wage, which affects women most. You can go on and on. That's why in the latest CNN poll, 59% of all women and 64% of women over 50 said the Republican Party doesn't get it when it comes to women. So no matter what Rand Paul says about Bill Clinton, the Republican war on women continues, and the women of America know it. Folks, that's my parting shot for today. Have a great Tuesday. We'll look for you again right here this again tomorrow morning. This is the morning. Bill Press Show. Everybody.